First off, we have Michael Jackson. The king of pop stated that he had no childhood as he was pushed into the music industry by his father at a very young age and he was unable to partake in any interests that were outside the Jackson family business. The relationship between Michael and his father was also a reason why the singer converted his house into a private amusement park much later on in life as he wanted to live life like a child again and recreate his childhood to be more positive. Jackson's father would make him and his siblings do excessive rehearsals with zero breaks. If his father saw them make even a small mistake, there would be consequences. Michael's dad would reportedly often tell him his nose was too big and Michael eventually got a nose job years later because of it. Our second celebrity is Meghan Markle. After marrying into the royal family in 2018, Meghan hasn't been shy when discussing the horrible things her new family has done to her. Meghan and Prince Harry accused two royal family members of making racist comments about their son, Archie. In a talk with Oprah Winfrey, the couple alleged that two unnamed members of the royal family had expressed concern about, quote, how dark Prince Archie's skin would be when he was born. She then wrote a private letter to King Charles exposing these names of these ra exposing the names of these racist family members. Also, Meghan said Kate Middleton made her cry over a disagreement about flower girl dresses. Despite reports that Meghan actually was the one who made Kate cry, she also said she was silenced by the royal family and directed to never comment on false reports. The idea that she was, quote, protected by the royal family crumbled soon after the marriage began, she said. That was hard to reconcile because it was only once we were married and everything started to really worsen that I came to understand that not only was I not being protected, but that they were willing to lie to protect other members of the family, Meghan said. They weren't willing to tell the truth to protect me and my husband. Harry said when the British tabloids were rudely commenting on Meghan's skin color, nobody from his family tried to help not even the queen. Our next celebrity is Jeanette McCurdy. Known for hit Nickelodeon shows like Sam and Cat and iCarly, Jeanette McCurdy exposed her horrible treatment as a child in her new memoir, I'm Glad My Mom Died. And some of these family stories are crazy. When McCurdy was 10 years old, she was cast in the Nickelodeon series iCarly. The show was a massive success and McCurdy quickly became a household name. However, her fame also came with a price. McCurdy was subjected to intense scrutiny from the media and she was constantly being judged for her appearance. McCurdy's mother's controlling behavior only worsened as she became more famous. She would often tell McCurdy that she was not good enough and constantly told her to eat less to stay skinny. Jeanette was forced to shower with her mom until age 16. That's crazy. Rapper Eminem was extremely vocal about his disdain for his mother, Deborah R. Nelson Mathers. In songs like Cleaning Out My Closet and Without Me, he alleged that his mother had been violent and addicted to drugs. The lyrics were so vile that Deborah filed a defamation lawsuit against her own son. The case was settled out of court in 2014 and Eminem would later apologize in his song Headlights. Headlights is an apology to his mother for the years of insults and his plea for a united or at least less dysfunctional family. The title Headlights is a reference to their last meeting. As she drove away, he became fixated on the headlights of her car as he coped with feelings of overwhelming sadness. He admits to his recklessness with lyrics directed towards his mom in the very first line, not really knowing his words would hurt her that much. In the song, Eminem references a few incidences from their rocky relationship, like getting kicked out of the house on Christmas Eve, the constant fighting, and his younger brother Nathan's removal to foster care. He also expresses regret that he has never let his mother be involved in his children's lives. In the song, he acknowledges that his mother wrongfully endured the brunt of the blame for his tough upbringing and even gives her credit for her efforts to raise him as a single parent. Eminem admits that he remains estranged from his mother to this 
day. He also states that he cringes when he hears songs like Cleaning Out My Closet on the radio and he no longer performs it at live shows. Our next celebrity is Macaulay Culkin. He became famous as a child actor for his role as Kevin McAllister in the family comedy Home Alone, for which he was nominated many awards like a Golden Globe Award for Best Act in a Motion Picture Musical or Comedy. But despite the success, Macaulay Culkin had a hard time dealing with the nightmare that was his manager, aka his dad. The pressure his dad placed on him and his demanding daily schedule resulted in Macaulay becoming exasperated and drained, ultimately leading to the young actor's retirement from film acting at age 14. On a further note, Home Alone director Chris Columbus was also frustrated in working with Kit, Macaulay's dad, to the point where he ensued that there were no child actors with the stage parent during any of his later films. To this day, Macaulay and his father are still estranged, with Kit even stating publicly that he, quote, didn't consider Macaulay a son. Wow. Our next celebrity is Doja Cat, singer of hits like Say So and Paint the Town Red. Doja Cat has become a household name, but recently she's been in the tabloids for something other than music. Reports recently came out that Doja Cat's brother knocked out her teeth, so claims their mother. According to new legal documents, Doja's mom, Deborah Elizabeth Sawyer, filed for a temporary restraining order against her 30-year-old son, and in her filing, she makes some serious accusations. Doja's mom lists Doja as another person who needs protection from her brother. And that's not all. Doja Cat's mom also alleges that Doja Cat's brother gave Doja cuts and bruises and destroyed and stole some of Doja's property. In the documents, Doja's mother claims he is also verbal towards his famous sister in a very degrading and demeaning manner, and she says he has made Doja feel, quote, unsafe and traumatized. Another celebrity with a very troubled family life involves Ariel Winter of Modern Family. Ariel was legally emancipated from her parents at the age of 17, three years after her mom was publicly accused of taking advantage of her physically and emotionally. Court documents obtained by TMZ allege that Crystal, Ariel's mom, had placed Ariel on such strict diets while she was shooting the show Modern Family that workers on set had to, quote, sneak her food. Ariel said herself, that quote, my mother would dress me in the smallest miniskirts, sailor suits, low cut things, the shortest dresses you have ever seen. People thought I was 24 when I was 12. If there was gonna be a nude scene when I was that age, my mother would have a thousand percent said yes. Our next celebrity is Miss Paris Hilton. After her parents gave up, after her parents gave up raising her, believing she was too rebellious of a teen, Paris got woken up in the middle of the night by men in masks who forced her to get in a truck heading to a boarding school for troubled children. She found out later that her parents set the entire thing up. Almost immediately after she arrived, quote, I knew it was going to be worse than anywhere else, says Hilton. The violence she faced, she says, took place on a daily basis. It was supposed to be a school, but classes were not the focus at all, says Hilton. From the moment I woke up until I went to bed, it was all day screaming in my face, yelling at me, continuous torture. The staff would say terrible things. They were constantly making me feel bad about myself and bully me. I think it was their goal to break us down, hitting and strangling us. They wanted to instill fear in the kids so we'd, so we'd be too scared to disobey them. Four of Paris Hilton's former teen classmates also made similar allegations about the school, including that they were often force-fed their medication and held down by restraints as punishment. Our next celebrity on the list is Judy Garland. Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz wasn't always so cheery. On June 10th, 1922, Judy was born, and she was a performer. <laughs> Judy was born. On June 10th, 1922, Judy was born, and she was a performer from the start. Her first stage performance was at two and a half years old. Her home life, though, was tumultuous. Her father, Frank, had frequent affairs with young men. In 1926, Judy's family left town to escape scandal and headed to California. Her mother, Ethel, quickly tried to shape her daughter into becoming a Hollywood star. Ethel, a controlling stage mom, was the first person to put young Judy on a diet of medications. In 1939, when Garland was 16, she got her big break as Dorothy Gale in The Wizard of Oz. Originally, Shirley Temple was supposed to play Dorothy, so the studio tried to make Garland 
and look as young as possible. As in, she had to lose some weight. The studio put her on a daily diet of chicken soup, 80 cigarettes a day, and diet pills. Her waist was corseted and her nose affixed with prosthetics. Speaking of Shirley Temple, she was another child star with a horrible story. Her mom, who pressured her into taking rigorous dance classes from the age of three, never, interve never intervened when issues occurred. Fans would also claim that her famous trademark blonde curls were a wig, so she would often get her hair yanked and pulled on by strangers trying to prove the rumor true. In reality, her ringlet curls were maintained by a torturous nightly process and a weekly vinegar soak that would burn and sting her eyes. It was because of this that Temple found herself wishing that she wore a wig. When she grew up, she quickly married a man named John Ager and reports of his drinking and mistreatment of America's favorite actress angered the public and eventually she divorced him. The issues with John were a combination of being a heavy drinker, fame, and also the fact that he resented being referred to as Mr. Shirley Temple. Shirley finally quit the acting industry when she was 22 years old as she felt her time had come. First off, Miss Britney Spears. On February 16th, 2007, the Gimme More singer infamously shaved her head. Days later, she shocked the world by furiously attacking a paparazzo's car with an umbrella. The following July, the pop star offered up a bizarre explanation for her violent behavior. I was preparing my character for a role in a movie where the husband never plays his part, so they switch places accidentally, she wrote on her website. I take all my rolls very seriously and got a little carried away. Unfortunately, I didn't get the part. But in her 2023 memoir, her opinion on the incident changed. She says, I'd been eyeballed so much growing up. I'd been looked up and down. I had people telling me what they thought of my body since I was a teenager. Shaving my head and acting out were ways of pushing back, Spears adds in the book. After Britney was put in a court-ordered conservatorship in 2008, granting her father and a lawyer control over all her financial and personal affairs, she says she was forbidden from keeping the new shaved look. Under the conservatorship, I was made to understand that those days were now over, she writes. I had to grow my hair out and get back into shape. I had to go to bed early and take whatever medication they told me to take. Our next celebrity meltdown involves nothing compares to you singer Sinead O'Connor. Sinead was performing on SNL when a brief moment destroyed her entire career. On October 3rd, 1992, O'Connor appeared on SNL to promote her new album, Am I Not Your Girl? For the second song of the evening, O'Connor had chosen to perform an acapella version of Bob Marley's song, War. Throughout the performance, she stared intently into the camera, and as she sang the final line, We Have Confidence in the Victory of Good Over Evil, O'Connor held a photograph of the Pope directly in front of the camera, ripped it up, saying, Fight the real enemy, before throwing the pieces to the floor. The SNL producers were not aware of O'Connor's plan. During the dress rehearsal, she had held up a picture of a child. Everybody at SNL apparently froze after the live performance, unsure how to react, and that the music producer, Liz Welch, went from jubilation to tears. The executive producer, Lorne Michaels, said the air went out of the studio and that he ordered that the applause sign should not be used. The audience remained silent and O'Connor returned to her dressing room where somebody found her talking to herself, quote, doing something between poetry and chanting. Our next celebrity meltdown involves Nicki Minaj and Mariah Carey. On an episode of American Idol, the former show judges got into a curse word filled fight. Minaj criticized Carey for being too harsh on a contestant, which the Vision of Love singer responded by saying, I'm sorry, it's just that that's what I do, Nicki. The Anaconda rapper immediately fired back. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry I can't help her she said, tossing her seat behind her. Maybe I should just get off the effing panel. Let me get off the panel. After leaving the room, Nikki was overheard shouting, shut the F up, finish the show, I'm done. But that's not the only on-air meltdown Nicki Minaj has had. When accepting her VMA award for best music video, Nikki made a dig at fellow performer Miley Cyrus. While thanking her pastor and other fans, Nikki said, back to this B word who had a lot to say about me the other day in the press. Miley, what's good? Speaking of on-air meltdowns, Hugh Grant had some 
rude things to say to Ellen while on her talk show. After she complimented her guest, calling him fantastic, smart, and all those things, Grant responded back by saying, I wish I thought that about you. He also had some rude things to say about Julia Roberts while on the Oprah show. Very big mouth. Literally, physically, she has a very big mouth. When I was kissing her, I was aware of a faint echo. Again, they would try to get Grant back on track during the interview, mentioning that Julia Roberts was a really good person, in which Grant responded by saying, I wouldn't go that far. Hugh Grant would go on to admit that this current relationship with Roberts is not on the best of terms because of past comments. I've probably made too many jokes about the size of her mouth. She might hate me by now. Michael Jackson seemed to have a meltdown after his infamous baby dangling incident. If you don't know what I'm talking about, here is the story. In 2002, Michael Jackson visited Berlin to accept an award for his philanthropic work on behalf of children, a lifetime Bambi entertainment award. During his stay, the pop star dangled his nine month old son, nicknamed Blanket because his face was covered with a towel, over the balcony of the hotel he was staying in. It seemed that what the king of pop was trying to do was show his baby to the fans that had gathered outside his hotel, but the public's response was obviously completely opposite from what Jackson had expected. As soon as photos and videos of the incident were released to the public, the media started criticizing Michael's parenting skills and reckless behavior. Ringo Starr, a former member of the Beatles, got in a serious altercation with interviewer Sherry Hewson. During a live event, she said, he just sat down, said, okay then girls, what are we doing here? Shall we just get Paul McCartney out of the way? This was live, by the way. Anyway, he carries on. Let's get Paul McCartney out the way. You want me to talk about Paul McCartney, I said. Well, no, you're here. And he said, no, you don't. You want to talk about Paul McCartney. She continued, he was so angry. It was just so weird. I thought, why? Why, why, why? It was just a really weird thing. And then he said to the audience, can I tell you all, if anyone wants an autograph, cannot have one because I don't do things like that. At the end of it, one of the producers came up with one of her little children who was only four years old and said that she knew he didn't do autographs but told him that her daughter was only four and she really loves the Beatles. He just stared and said, really? And then he said, did you not hear what I just said? I don't sign autographs. Yikes. David Letterman, former host of the David Letterman show, has made some really weird on-screen moments while interviewing celebrities and some of these stories are really hard to believe. When he was interviewing Madonna, he stopped the interview and asked her, why don't you go and kiss the guy in the audience? Shocked, she said, why are you so obsessed with my love life? He responded by saying, go kiss the guy in the audience. It would knock him out. She responded, I can't. I've never succumbed to peer pressure. Interviewing Jennifer Lopez, he made the cameraman zoom into a close-up of her chest while saying, that's pretty good. That's pretty darn good. Ew. David Letterman seems quite rude, but perhaps the rudest interview story has to go to Jesse Eisenberg. While promoting his new movie, Now You See Me, the actor seemed to have a meltdown while in an interview, being extremely rude to the interviewer. Out of nowhere, Jesse brought up the often maligned comedian Carrot Top. Before long, it became clear that Eisenberg only brought up Carrot Top so he could mock the interviewer, whose name is Puga, her abilities as an interviewer. Do you know the comedian Carrot Top? Well, you're like the Carrot top of interviewers. Yeah, it's a good thing. Don't cry now. Cry after the interview is over, because otherwise I'll look like I'm responsible for it. Yikes. After this back and forth conversation, Eisenberg half-heartedly performed a magic trick. Puga then asked Eisenberg if he could say her name to the camera. In response, Eisenberg asked Puga to explain what his motivation for saying her name was, like he was performing an acting exercise. When Puga asked Eisenberg to say her name like he was trying to find her in a crowded place, he quietly said her name. Puga then remarked that she would never be able to hear him in a club, and his explanation for why he was being quiet seemed very harsh. He said, the thing is, I actually didn't want to find you. I actually was hoping to stay alone. After the interview was done, the interviewer said she went behind the curtain and cried. Shia LaBeouf, former Disney star known for his troubled past, turned heads when he wore a paper bag saying, I am not famous anymore, to a red carpet premiere for his new movie. Just hours before the premiere, LaBeouf found himself sat with a panel in front of a room full of journalists as well as his co-stars. When asked about his 
his decision to star in a movie with so many love scenes, he bent low over the microphone and replied, When the seagulls follow the trawler, it's because they think sardines will be thrown into the sea. Thank you very much. He then got up, pushed the mic away, and stormed out of the conference, leaving the audience and his fellow panelists mystified. What does that even mean? Our final celebrity meltdown involves Miss Ariana Grande. In 2015, Ariana went with friends to a donut shop to grab a sweet treat. Everything was looking good until the employee at the donut shop supposedly turned around behind the counter and while he wasn't looking, Ariana licked some of the donuts still for sale while saying, I hate America and later calling the donuts disgusting. The security footage of the incident went mega viral online and Ariana quickly went to Twitter to apologize saying, seeing a video of yourself behaving poorly that you have no idea was taken is such a rude awakening that you don't know what to do. I was so disgusted with myself, she said, I'm not here to make any excuses or to justify my behavior because I can't. I'm just here to apologize. Number one, we have Jared Leto. Leto is an actor known to be method. And if you don't know what method acting means, it is a technique or type of acting in which an actor aspires to encourage sincere and emotionally expressive performances by fully inhabiting the role of the character. So basically, aka never breaking character on or off set. Jared Leto stated completely in character as the Joker and sent his castmates disturbing gifts and his co-stars had some things to say about it. After he sent Viola Davis a box of bullets, she almost had her pepper spray out. She told E! News, it was a little worrisome, it made you a little bit nervous and I'm pretty tough. You know, I got into a few fights when I was growing up, but it scared me a little bit. But it doesn't stop there. Viola also said Jared introduced himself to the cast by sending them a dead pig and sent Margot Robbie, who is playing Harley Quinn, a black rat in a box in which Margot kept as a pet. Next on the list we have Jennifer Aniston. Known as the good girl in Hollywood, Jennifer Aniston seems like she would not hurt a fly. Well, that all changed when Jay Moore, her co-star in 1997's Picture Perfect, said that his most awkward interaction with a female co-star was quote, being on the set of a movie where the leading woman was unhappy with his presence and made it clear from day one. Although he never named any names, this was the only movie that fit the description. Maybe he's too scared Aniston's legal team will get involved if he speaks up. He also said, I hadn't done many movies, and even though they screen tested some pretty famous guys, I somehow sneaked into the leading role. The actress said, no way, you've got to be kidding me, loudly, between takes to other actors on set. I would literally go to my mom's house and cry. Next up, we have Bill Murray. Bill has been in the news for a while now for accusations made against him, but this particular accusation is from the year 2000, while Bill was filming Charlie's Angels. His co-star Lucy Liu had some negative things to say about him, telling media outlets that Bill hurled insults at her while rehearsing a scene. While Liu didn't specify what Murray said to her during rehearsal, she confirmed reports that the actor started, quote, hurling insults at me after learning of new scenes rewrites. In the moment, the actress had difficulty processing what was happening. I was like, wow, he seems like he's looking straight at me. I couldn't believe that his comments could be towards me, because what do I have to do with anything majorly important at the time? I say, I'm sorry, are you talking to me? And clearly he was, because then it started to become a one-on-one -on -one communication. From Lou's perspective, some of the language Murray used was quote, inexcusable and unacceptable. She therefore decided to speak up in spite of the fact that she was one of the lesser known actors on set. I stood up for myself and I do not regret it, she said, because no matter how low on the totem pole you may be or wherever you came from, there's no need to condescend or to put other people down. Next up, we have Miss Jennifer Lopez. Jane Fonda called out her monster-in-law co-star Jennifer Lopez for injuring her on set. On the Drew Barrymore show, she said, the thing that comes to mind right away is that we have a slapping scene. I slap her, she slaps me. Jennifer, 
As per Jennifer, she had this enormous diamond ring. When she slapped me, it cut open across my eyebrow. And you know, she's never apologized, she concluded. But Jane Fonda isn't the only one who has some things to say about JLo. Last year, a viral TikTok trend where people told their JLo horror stories went viral. And some of the stories are crazy. One user said, I served at a restaurant where JLo and Ben Affleck were eating. At the end of the meal, Ben put a $100 bill down as a tip for the waitress. As Jennifer was just about to leave, she grabbed the $100 bill and replaced it with $5. Yikes. Next up, we have Alyssa Milano. Alyssa Milano has been exposed by her charmed co star Rose McGowan for being toxic on set. During a Twitter spat with her former charmed co star, she tweeted, You threw a fit in front of the crew, yelling, They don't pay me enough to do this. Appalling behavior on the daily. I cried every time we got renewed because you made that set toxic AF. She also shared an interview clip where she told Nightline, I don't like Alyssa because I think she's a lie. Responding in a statement to E! News, Alyssa Milano said, Hurt people hurt people. Commenting any further does not align with my wellness plan. Next up, we have Gene Kelly. Gene is one of the most famous actors and dancers from the 1950s, and his co-star of Singing in the Rain had some things to say about him. In her 2013 memoir, Unsinkable, Debbie Reynolds wrote that her Singing in the Rain co-star slash director Gene Kelly was a, quote, cruel taskmaster. She said, he came to rehearsals and criticized everything I did and never gave me a word of encouragement. She also alleged that he made unwanted advances towards her during their first kiss scene, writing, the camera closed in, Gene took me tightly in his arms and shoved his tongue down my throat. Ew, what was that? I screeched. Breaking free of his grasp and spitting, I ran around frantic, yelling for some Coca-Cola to cleanse my mouth. It was the early 1950s and I was an innocent kid who had never been French kissed before. I was stunned that this 39-year-old man would do this to me. Jean reportedly once said, I wasn't very nice to Debbie. I'm surprised she still speaks to me. Next up, we have Leah Michelle. The Glee star has been in the news lately for her apparent horrible behavior on set and offset. Replying to a tweet Leah Michelle made about the Black Lives Matter movement, Glee co star Samantha Marie Ware wrote Remember when you made my first television gig a living hell? Because I'll never forget. I believe you told everybody that if you had the opportunity, you would poo in my wig. Amongst other traumatic microaggressions that made me question a career in Hollywood. Another co-star, Heather Morris, also had some things to say on Twitter. Was she unpleasant to work with? Very much so. For Leah to treat others with the disrespect that she did for as long as she did, I believe she should be called out. And finally, Dabier Snell, who appeared on Glee in 2014, also recounted rude behavior from Leah Michelle on set. He tweeted, Girl, you wouldn't let me sit at the table with the other cast members because I didn't belong there. F U Leah in all caps. Our next celebrity is Jamie Lynn Spears. Britney's little sister seems to have caused some trouble on the set of Nickelodeon's Zoe 101. Alexa Nicholas opened up in 2019 about Jamie Lynn Spears and other Zoe 101 cast members allegedly bullying her on the set of the teen show. Nicholas was notably written off the show after season two. In addition to claims of bullying tactics like exclusion and mocking, Nicholas also revealed in 2022 that she was once lured into a room with Jamie Lynn and her sister Britney Spears under false pretenses, deliberately separated from her mother. Britney Spears reportedly screamed at Nicholas and threatened her future in Hollywood. Nicholas revealed that Britney has apologized since and called her an amazing person, noting the stress eight months pregnant Britney was under at the time and saying that she felt Britney had been manipulated by her sister Jamie Lynn. After Nicholas's interview, Britney publicly apologized apologized writing on Twitter that Jamie Lynn had told her she was being bullied and that my sister was literally like my daughter growing up so I apologize for my ignorance for yelling at you when I obviously had no idea what was really going on. Kiefer Sutherland is the next celebrity
celebrity on our list and he has some serious allegations made against him. Let's get into it. After joining the show 24, Freddie Prince Jr. was vocal about how much he disliked the show's lead actor and really his entire time on the program. I did 24 and it was terrible. I hated every moment of it, he told ABC News. Kiefer was the most unprofessional dude in the entire world. That's not me talking trash, I'd say it to his face. I think everybody that's worked with him has said that. Prince also took a break from acting after his stint on 24, saying that the experience made him want to quote, quit the business. Rebel Wilson recently opened up about quote, awful and disgusting advances from a male co-star, though she didn't name who. He called me into a room and pulled down his pants, she revealed, saying the co-star then asked her to perform a very vulnerable act. Afraid of retaliation and wanting to be professional, Wilson stayed on the project, though she said, definitely amongst industry circles, I made sure people knew what happened. She had also separately revealed that a male co-star in a position of power asked me to go into a room with him, all whilst his male friends tried to film the incident on their iPhones and laughed. I repeatedly said no and eventually got out of the room. Jim Carrey, one of the biggest and highest paid actors of our time, has shared his thoughts on Hollywood since retiring from the spotlight. After the Chris Rock Will Smith Oscars slap incident, Carrey shared his opinions on the standing ovation Will Smith received when winning an Oscar later that night. Hollywood is just spineless and it really felt like it was a clear indication that we aren't the cool club anymore. Carrie went on to say that Smith should have been escorted from the Dolby Theater after slapping Rock for making an insensitive joke about his wife Jada Pinkett Smith. In March 2022, Carrie announced to Access Hollywood that he was probably retiring from acting. Well, I'm retiring. Yeah, probably. I'm being fairly serious, he shared. It depends. If the angels bring some sort of script that's written in gold ink that says to me that it's going to be really important for people to see. I might continue down the road, but I'm taking a break. Carrie added, I feel like, and this is something you might never hear another celebrity say as long as time exists, I have enough. I've done enough. I am enough. Our second celebrity is Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato starred in many Disney Channel movies and shows like Camp Rock, Princess Protection Program, and Sunny with a Chance. But on a podcast, Lovato shares she, as well as many of her co-stars, were subjected to harsh treatment and multiple strict rules and regulations while working for the company. She said, you can't be seen at a party with a red cup in your hand because it looks like you're drinking. There was this website called Ocean Up that would take all scandalous things that were happening to Disney actors and put it on there. So we lived in fear of that website. I didn't have food in my hotel room. They wouldn't let me eat the snacks in the mini bar. Then my security walked by my room and was made aware that they had barricaded me into my hotel room. They put furniture outside my door so that I couldn't get out and sneak out and eat if I wanted to. It was that level of controlling when it came to my food, which just made my eating troubles worse. She also stated that she felt that she was practically taking care of her own family. At a certain point, I was paying for the roof over my whole family's head and my dad had quit his job to become my manager so his income was coming right from me. My mom was a stay at home mom and there was just that pressure of I'm paying for everything and like I need to keep going because if things start to disappear so does the finances. Our next celeb on the list is Isla Fisher. The actress nearly drowned while filming a scene in Now You See Me. Fisher discussed what went wrong with the stunt and it is horrifying. I was in a tank of water. My character is submerged in a tank and piranhas are dropped on her head, she says. And whilst we were there, we shot it over three and a half days. Even though I had a quick release magnetic thing on my handcuffs, the chain that went between my ankles and my wrists was not able to be broken. And it got stuck underneath the slat and I was trapped. The actor also discussed the kill switch in the tank. There was a quick release switch that could have emptied the tank of water in 70 seconds. However, as a result of being tangled, Fisher was unable to reach for the switch. I was very scared and I was banging and saying, set me free. But everybody just thought I was doing fabulous acting. They thought I was being Meryl Streep in that tank. Actually, I was drowning. I guess Hollywood really wanted that good 
take. Our next celebrity is model Miranda V. The modeling world seems harmless, but darkness looms. Miranda accused Gigi and Bella Hadid's father of inappropriate physical behavior in a lengthy Instagram post in February 2018. Thank you, Kate Upton. It is time people like at Paul Marciano and Mohammed Hadid get exposed for who they really are. I met with Paul at his guest headquarters. That's actually an apartment. I thought it was a professional meeting, but it was just me, him, and champagne where he inappropriately touched me in an apartment. All to get a test shoot for guests. Former Disney Child star Allison Stoner exposes Hollywood with her new podcast and some of the claims are alarming. Allison said, I lost the ability to relate to non-famous experiences after the age of eight. Imagine on your eighth birthday you could never walk outside again without being stopped, asked for photos, or followed unless you wore a disguise or brought security with you. Allison also mentioned the horror when they had to kiss both Dylan Sprouse and Cole Sprouse for an episode of The Sweet Life. The experience left them with conflicted feelings. Your character may have some arc or transformation that isn't evident upon reading the script of the first episode, Stoner explained. So writers and executives might decide to make your character do anything on the next episode and it's assumed that you're gonna agree to whatever is scripted. My first kiss and several of the times I experienced kissing all happened on camera. On camera. Was I ready for that? No. I felt young and uncomfortable, Stoner said, but they were already under contract and didn't want to appear difficult. Another celeb that has exposed Hollywood is Selena Gomez, the superstar who boasts 430 million followers on Instagram, often speaks about the downside of being famous, telling Interview Magazine in 2020 that everything she does causes a reaction, saying, the sad part is I don't remember a time when that wasn't the case. What has kept me afloat is that I know eventually it'll be somebody else, and I don't mean that in a negative way. She said, adding that fame has still allowed her to talk about things that are important to her. A huge part of why I have a platform is to help people. That's why I think I'm okay with the magnitude. I mean, I'm not really okay with it, but I'm gonna say that I am because it's worth it. Perhaps the celebrity with the most famous Hollywood horror story is Miss Britney Spears. In 2008, Jamie Spears, her dad, was granted the conservatorship after Britney reportedly struggled with mental health issues and was hospitalized. After after Britney was released, a Los Angeles court made the conservatorship permanent, giving her father power over all her finances and her medical decisions. Although Britney was an adult at the time, she was treated like a prisoner and says she was not allowed to leave her house unless granted permission. Her father was making more money than her because he was taking a huge percentage of her earnings and not telling her. Wow, what a father he is. The greed of Hollywood doesn't stop there though. Scientology, a popular organization in Hollywood, has been known to take insane amounts of money from its members, claiming the payments will get them into a higher level in the afterlife. Actress Leah Remini, a former Scientologist, exposes the organization for the way they ruined her life after she left. The actress, who was brought into the church as an eight-year-old after her mother converted to the religion, slammed the organization for its alleged scare tactics and seemingly helping certain members avoid avoid jail for various horrible crimes. Leah met famous Scientologist slash actor Tom Cruise while still in the organization, but had to pay $1 million to do so which she paid. After leaving, Leah sued the organization for alleged stalking and hacking. She states she reportedly had cars chasing her and following her every single day and had hackers hack into her bank account and steal thousands of dollars all because she left the organization. Yikes. Not all Hollywood drama comes from Hollywood though. And this was the case for Kim Kardashian in Paris. In October 2016, while on a work trip to Paris, Kardashian was robbed at 3 a.m. while alone in her hotel. She was tied up and blindfolded while men in masks raided the hotel room for money. In the end, $10 million worth of jewelry was stolen as well as two cell phones. 
Kim's sisters and bodyguards were at the club while everything took place and Kim decided to stay home because she was tired. Boy was that a life changing mistake. Kim recalled the fear that she felt during a conversation with the concierge who was also held hostage in that moment. She says to the concierge, I'm like, what is happening? Are we gonna die? Just tell them I have children. I have babies. I have a husband. I have a family. Like I have to get home. Tell them, take anything you want. Two French judges later charged 12 people in relation to that robbery. Kardashian, who shares four kids with ex Kanye West, has said that she almost lost herself in the year following the crime. Explaining on the Alec Baldwin show in 2018, I was never depressed, but I wasn't motivated to get up and work like I used to. It shook me. However, the reality star also shared that she has learned to feel grateful for the experience in a way. There was a lot of me that measured who I was by how much I had. I thought, oh, I'm worth so much, she noted. That needed to change in me. Our final celebrity of the day is Miley Cyrus. Although Hannah Montana was a family friendly show, starring in it gave Miley an identity crisis, she says. I had gone from being a character almost as often as I was myself. And actually, the concept of the show is that when you're this character, when you have this alter ego, you're valuable. You've got millions of fans, you're the biggest star in the world. And then the concept was that when I looked like myself, when I didn't have the wig on anymore, nobody cared about me. I wasn't a star anymore. So that was drilled into my head, Cyrus explained. I really had to break that, and I think that's maybe why I almost created a characterized version of myself at times, in the way of being aware of how other people see me. I never created a character where it wasn't me, but I was aware of how people saw me, and I maybe played into it a little bit, Cyrus continued. Speaking of her persona, after Cyrus has also talked about how the costumes and makeup took their toll on her, likely causing some body dysmorphia. I'm this fragile little girl playing a 16 year old in a wig and a ton of makeup. It was like toddlers and tiaras. She said that being made to look like somebody she wasn't and made pretty for so many years meant that when it ended, she didn't know who she was. First on the list, we have comedian Amy Schumer. Perhaps the most hated comedian in the entire world, Amy Schumer has gone through her fair share of hate, including multiple viral YouTube videos with titles such as Watching Amy Schumer Until I laugh, where the video lasts almost an hour. Reasons behind the hating of Amy Schumer include allegations of her stealing jokes, and the proof is pretty insane. One user on Reddit pitched their opinion on the comedian, saying, I really liked her on Inside Amy Schumer, her show, so I went and got tickets to one of her comedy shows. She was an hour late to the show. After some time, the crowd got restless, so they sent some poor intern or something to fill in the time to tell some jokes. Everybody booed him. When Amy did the show, she showed up drunk, did about 40 minutes of terrible jokes, which just basically involved insulting the audience, and it was over. It was the worst show I've ever been to. Hated her ever since. Yikes. Alrighty, next on the list is Ellen DeGeneres. In 2020, Ellen got viciously cancelled and has never recovered from it. But even before that, Ellen was disliked by many viewers by being too upfront with celebrities in her interviews. These incidents include Ellen forcing Mariah Carey to reveal that she is pregnant by forcing champagne on her on live television. Mariah has had trouble with pregnancy in the past and was not ready to reveal that she was pregnant but was forced into it. This pregnancy also ended in another miscarriage. Another incident includes Ellen shaming Dakota Johnson for not in inviting her to her birthday party, and then Dakota revealing that Ellen was invited and she stood her up. These are horrible, but in 2020, even more drama came forward. It was revealed that senior producers at The Ellen Show fostered a very toxic workplace full of racism, intimidation, and fear going back years. It was reported that lower level employees were not allowed to make eye contact with Ellen and were never allowed to speak to her directly. Actually, wow. Other employees claimed they were fired after taking medical leave or days to attend family funerals. Transgender YouTuber Nikki Tutorials stated she wasn't allowed to use the restrooms backstage at The Ellen Show and had to use a special accessible washroom far away. Next on the list is another famous talk show host you guys might
might know, James Corden. Some of the allegations against James include him reportedly screaming at staff at the Balthazar restaurant in New York because his wife received an egg yolk omelet with egg whites in it. He was banned from the restaurant and the owner claims he is the most abusive customer ever. In 2010, a moment of genuine drama unfolded at the Glamour Award ceremony as James clashed with X-Men star Patrick Stewart on stage. This is drama. As he walked up on stage, Patrick Stewart told Corden to get his hands out of his pockets and accused him of looking around as if you would rather be anywhere in the world but here. He says, oh, you couldn't be more wrong, sir. You couldn't be more wrong, James responded. Genuinely, and if it looked like that, I'm so sorry, but when you come up and present an award, just get on with it. Patrick kept the argument going, making fun of Corden's weight. From where I was, I could see your belly, and that was from right at the back of the room. As the actor paused, James Corden hit back. I'm waiting for the punchline. Go on. No, seriously, go on. Now go on. You could see my belly, but we can all see you dying right now, James continued, saying, Can we get a taxi really quickly, please? There's an old man going home. Yikes. Next, we have another James, not James Corden this time, but YouTuber James Charles. James has gone through a ton of controversies throughout his social media career. In 2018, Charles was experiencing a backlash for his tweet about Ebola, where he tweeted, I can't believe we're going to Africa today. OMG, what if we get Ebola? In 2021, a 16-year-old boy claimed Charles had pressured him into exchanging photos through the Snapchat app. Charles spoke out against the allegations and claimed he had been unaware of the boy's age at the time of the interaction. But three more males came forward to share their negative Snapchat experiences with James, including a 17-year-old male that states James continued flirting with him after finding out his age. In the end, multiple media reports indicated that at least 15 boys and men had accused James Charles of inappropriate behavior. But perhaps the biggest controversy James has been involved in is his 2019 feud with fellow YouTuber Tati Westbrook. Tati says one reason she no longer wants to associate with James is because he's violently manipulative. Oh my god, you tried to trick a straight man into thinking he's gay yet again, and somehow you're the victim. It's really disgusting to manipulate somebody's sexuality, especially when they're emerging into adulthood and don't quite have everything figured out. Out, she says, recalling a phone call of theirs where he shared details. She also says he used his fame and money to threaten, ruin, and embarrass men who didn't reciprocate his advances. Our next most hated celeb is Amber Heard. Now, we all know Amber has been in the media over the last few years for some pretty bad stuff. The infamous Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard trial of 2022 included some troubling details about Amber. He said she would also have affairs frequently with male celebrities such as James Franco and her ex, Elon Musk. In 2020, phone recordings were released in which Amber admitted to hitting Johnny Depp. Amber is heard saying, I'm sorry that I didn't hit you across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you, babe. You're not punched. I don't know what the motion of my actual hand was, but you're fine. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was just hitting you. Meanwhile, Depp said in the recording, I left last night. Honestly, I swear to you, because I just couldn't take the idea of more physicality. Because had we continued it, it would have gotten bad. And baby, I told you this once. I'm scared to death. We are a crime scene right now, Depp continued. Amber replied, I can't promise you I won't get physical again. God, I sometimes get so mad I lose it. Let's just say after all this came to light, Amber is not the most liked celeb currently. The next celebrity is Chrissy Teigen, married to John Legend. Chrissy Teigen has had her fair share of controversies, mainly coming from Twitter. In 2014, Ariana Grande rose to fame and Chrissy seemed jealous of her newfound success. Randomly posting to Twitter one day, I love your cat ear headband. It alerts me to immediately hate you. Well, that's random, Chrissy. <laughs> and it's because of these random outbursts that people dislike her and continue to. Our next hated celebrity is Elon Musk. 
Musk. Elon is disliked by the public for the following reasons. He's made sexist and racist comments and reportedly abandoned his child after they came out as transgender. Also, his alleged poor treatment of his workers and his purchase of Twitter and his subsequent unbanning of many controversial people are just a few more reasons why people hate Elon Musk. Next on the list we have Kanye West. Kanye has been hated by the public for a really long time. Do you guys remember the Taylor Swift incident? If you don't, let me give you a quick refresh. At the 2009 VMAs, Taylor won Best Pop Music Video. While she was on stage accepting the award, Kanye leaped on stage taking the mic from Swift and saying, Beyonce deserved the award, not her. Oh, yikes. Our next hated celeb on the list is Kanye's ex wife, Kim Kardashian. Kim has been in a string of controversies her entire career, and many argue this is how she stays relevant. One of Kim's biggest controversies also involved Taylor Swift. After Kanye West's song, Famous, came out, Swift publicly stated she had no clue about the song and was angry because the song had some pretty crude things to say about her. But then Kim Kardashian releases several video clips of a phone conversation between West and Swift, in which he appears to get her support for the provocative lyrics. Kim K called Taylor a liar, and there a feud began. Our final celebrity on the list is Ariana Grande. Ariana has been in the news lately for her cheating scandal with Ethan Slater, but this is not the first time Ariana has come under fire for cheating. The late Naya Rivera, the star of Glee, had some tea to spill in her book. Ariana began dating Naya's ex-fiance Big Sean not too long after they called off their wedding plans in 2014. According to Naya, all was not well in their relationship. She and Big Sean had been fighting frequently while he was on the road. That's not the most fun thing to go through, but it is about to get even more dramatic. According to Refinery29, one chapter in the book contains the following quote, on the day that he was back in LA, he said he didn't want to see me, but since she had a key, she let herself into his house. I walk in, go downstairs, and guess what little girl is sitting cross-legged on the couch listening to music. It rhymes with Samariana Shamande. Cameron, a child prodigy, made his Hollywood debut at an early age, starring in various TV shows and films. Renowned for his seven season portrayal of Mike Seaver on the sitcom Growing Pains, he also made notable appearances in films like Like Father, Like Son, and Listen to Me. However, Cameron today is less recognized for his acting credentials and is more associated with his extreme Christian ideologies. His persistent public discussions about his religious beliefs, including his views on homosexuality, have largely led to his exclusion from Hollywood. Irrespective of whether he's participating in TV interviews or using social media, Cameron persistently shares his religious beliefs and views. Kirk's early success in Hollywood was undeniable with his talent and charisma, making him a household name at a young age. However, as he grew older, his focus shifted from acting to spreading his religious beliefs. And despite the backlash and criticism, Cameron remains steadfast in sharing his faith with others. But Cameron's commitment to his religious beliefs has not only affected his career in Hollywood, but also his personal relationships. He's married to actress Chelsea Noble, who shares similar beliefs as him, and they have six children together. Next up, Brendan Fraser, recognized for his roles in late 90s and early 2000s blockbusters like Bedazzled and The Mummy. Brendan experienced a significant decrease in his acting roles as the 2000s progressed. Frazier attributes this downturn in his career, in part, to a disturbing encounter with Philip Burke, the former president of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. He alleges that Burke him at the Beverly Hills Hotel in 2003, and as a result of his defiance, the HFPA has seldom invited him to the Golden Globes since the incident. Burke disputes Frazier's narrative, insisting in his 2014 memoir that his interaction with Frazier was merely a wistful pinch on the behind. While Frazier acknowledges there may be other factors contributing to his diminished workload, he strongly believes his experience with Burke played a significant role. In recent years, the hashtag MeToo movement has brought attention to the pervasive issue of Sun Hollywood. Frazier's story is just one example of many where a powerful individual in the entertainment industry has used their position to exploit someone. Next, Roseanne Barr, the actress and comedian known for her staunch support of Donald Trump's presidency, has often been a contentious figure in Hollywood. However, in May 2018, Barr's typically fiery Twitter commentary crossed a line when she posted a racially offensive tweet about Valerie Jarrett, a senior advisor to former President Barack Obama. Barr soon deleted the tweet and offered an apology, but the damage was done. ABC responded swiftly by canceling the Roseanne reboot on the very same day. The president of the company tagged her comments as abhorrent
abhorrent, repugnant, and inconsistent with our values. Up next, Tippi Hadron, who embarked on her journey in the fashion industry as a model in her early 20s. But it was the iconic filmmaker Alfred Hitchcock who spotted her potential and launched her into the Hollywood limelight. Hedren's talent shone through in two of Hitchcock's captivating creations, the spine-chilling thriller The Birds and the intriguing psychological drama Marnie. However, the duo's professional rapport soured when Hitchcock allegedly crossed professional boundaries with unwelcome sexual advances. After Hedren decisively rejected Hitchcock and declared Marnie their final project together, a furious Hitchcock vowed to sabotage her career. He kept her tied to a contract that barred her from working for two years before begrudgingly selling it in 1966. Nevertheless, Hedren's tenacity saw her acting career bounce back and she later found her voice as a dedicated advocate for animal rights. Up next, Monique, renowned comedian and actor known as Monique Angela Hicks in her daily life. First rose to fame through her hilarious stand-up shows and her unforgettable role as Nicole Nikki Parker in the popular UPN series The Parkers from 1999 to 2004, but it was in 2009 when she portrayed an abusive mother in Lee Daniels' film Precious that she truly took the limelight. Her stunning performance earned her an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress, setting a new pinnacle in her career. Yet, Monique's journey took an unexpected turn after her Precious triumph. In a 2015 interview with The Hollywood Reporter, she revealed that her film and TV roles had dwindled significantly. She pointed to her stance during the 2010 Oscar campaign for Precious as the reason behind her decline. She even mentioned a phone call with Lee Daniels, the director of Precious, who allegedly told her that Hollywood had excluded her for not playing by their rules. Daniels later commented on Monique's allegations, vaguely confirming her statements by saying her demands through Precious were not always in line with the campaign, which caused a rift between her and the Hollywood community. Now let's talk about an actor who's been a stable in Hollywood for many years. Yes, we're discussing Isaiah Washington. With numerous notable television and movie roles under his belt, he's no stranger to the limelight. But the role that really brought him into the spotlight was his portrayal of Preston Burke in the hit show Grey's Anatomy. However, his career took a turn for the worse after he used a homophobic slur towards a fellow cast member. The incident not only led to the exit from the show, but also put him on Hollywood's blacklist. The situation was further exacerbated when he repeated the slur following a Golden Globe win for the show. To Today, while he periodically appears in roles, his career never really regained the momentum it once had. For many, this incident defined Washington's career and overshadowed his previous successes. However, it also opened up a conversation about the problem of homophobia in Hollywood and the lack of consequences for those who perpetuate it. Since then, Washington has publicly apologized for his actions and has been an advocate for LGBTQ rights. Despite making a stellar comeback as a director with Hacksaw Ridge in 2016, Mel Gibson continued continues to remain largely ostracized from Hollywood, it's unlikely we'll witness much of his acting prowess in the future. Gibson, who enjoyed immense popularity and success as an actor and director during the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, saw his career irreparably tarnished due to a series of highly publicized meltdowns. One of the most damaging incidents involved an anti-Semitic tirade during a DUI arrest, which was widely reported and condemned globally. More than a decade has passed since the incident, and while some fans have extended their forgiveness, a significant portion can't seem to shake off the recollection of his controversial actions and words. Despite his past controversies, Mel Gibson has not completely disappeared from the industry. In 2019, he directed and co-wrote the critically acclaimed film Hacksaw Ridge, which received multiple nominations at major award ceremonies, including the Academy Awards. However, it's clear that the public perception of Gibson has greatly shifted since his heyday. He's no longer the beloved actor and director he once was, but rather a controversial figure who continues to face backlash for his past transgressions. Next. CeeLo Green first made his mark in the music scene in the mid 90s, but it was his 2010 breakout single F.U. which skyrocketed to the number two spot on the Billboard charts that truly stamped his name in the industry. His newfound fame opened doors to opportunities such as becoming a judge on The Voice and even landing his own TV show. However, his career took a nosedive following some highly inappropriate tweets concerning homophobia. As a result, Green faced serious backlash, losing his TV show, his position on The Voice, and even being turned away from his booked concert gig. CeeLo Green has since apologized for his actions and has faced criticism for his lack of accountability. However, he's also received support from fans who believe in forgiveness and second chances. Now let's talk about public meltdowns and who better to discuss than Charlie Sheen. This man, once a gifted actor and among the highest paid TV stars worldwide, is now largely known for his drug-fueled, very public meltdown a few years ago. Anyone remember hashtag winning and tiger blood? He was kicked off two and a half men where he was making nearly two million per episode. 
episode. Many saw him as someone who'd clearly gone off the deep end after years of alcohol and although he has done a bit of work since then, most organizations steer clear from Sheen and his outlandish behavior. Charlie Sheen's public meltdown is a prime example of how one's personal life can have a major impact on their professional career. Despite being incredibly talented and successful in his field, Sheen's actions outside of work ultimately led to his downfall. And last on our countdown, only about 10 years ago, Vince Vaughn was one of Hollywood's busiest actors, with a flourishing career. His quick wit and charisma made him a fan favorite, especially in numerous iconic comedies. However, his presence in Hollywood seems to have dwindled recently, suggesting that his prime time as an actor might be behind him. His overlooked status is subtle and seems to stem from his limited acting range and his political ideologies. Although conservatism isn't n inherently problematic, advocating for guns in all schools as a countermeasure to mass shootings can make studios hesitant. His ability to shine has also been restricted to comedic roles, often in tandem with Owen Wilson, as evidenced by his stint on HBO's True Detective. Undeniably, Hollywood icon Mel Gibson has faced significant public relations challenges since his 2006 arrest for an alleged DUI. Gibson was reportedly recorded making anti-Semitic remarks during his arrest in Malibu, California, leading to widespread criticism. In response to the controversy, Gibson sought rehabilitation and expressed deep remorse for his actions. But despite these efforts, many speculated his career was irreparably damaged. His reputation suffered another blow in 2010 when he was allegedly recorded using racist language by his then partner, Oksana Grigorieva. Following the leak, Gibson faced condemnation from civil rights and anti-domestic violence organizations. However, rumors of a career resurgence began to circulate. In 2017, Gibson reappeared at the Oscars as a nominee for Best Director. Even though his name was initially omitted from the Hacksaw Ridge movie poster, later The Hollywood Reporter revealed Gibson's plans to co-write and direct a remake of The Wild Bunch and a sequel to Passion of the Christ in 2020. Despite these controversies surrounding Gibson, there is no denying his talent and success in the film industry. As an actor, director, and producer, he's played a significant role in some of cinema's most iconic films such as Braveheart, Lethal Weapon, and Mad Max. On to the next! In 2007, a notorious video emerged featuring former Baywatch actor David Hasselhoff indulging in a cheeseburger, seemingly under the influence. Hasselhoff admitted to being a recovering alcoholic in a statement and explained, as quoted by The Hollywood Reporter, that the video was recorded by his daughters as a wake-up call. Although the incident haunted Hasselhoff for years, he chose to see the lighter side of it. In a conversation with Inside Edition, he stated that his daughters found humor in the situation. In 2015, Hasselhoff decided to poke fun at the incident in his mockumentary show Hoff the Record. His subsequent works include the 2016 film Baywatch, along with The Rock, and online show named Being David Hasselhoff. Despite his successful career and popularity, David faced a major career setback when he was fired from the popular reality show America's Got Talent. Hasselhoff, who had been a judge on the show since its inception in 2006, was reportedly let go due to concerns about his erratic behavior, possibly fueled by his publicly acknowledged struggles with alcoholism. The news of his departure was initially met with surprise and disappointment by fans who had come to appreciate his unique humor and candid critiques on the show. Next up, in the midst of the 2016 US presidential race, a shocking audio recording came to light, capturing a private conversation between then candidate Donald Trump and TV host Billy Bush from the program Access Hollywood. On the recording, Trump controversially declared, when you're a star, you can do anything, to which Bush seemingly concurred, responding, whatever you want. Trump's vulgar comments continued, including an explicit phrase about women, which was met with laughter and tasteless remarks about women's legs by Bush. Despite the scandal, Trump went on to win the presidency, dismissing his words as mere locker room talk. Conversely, Bush faced immediate repercussions, losing his position on the Today Show. In a piece for the New York Times, Bush admitted that he didn't take Trump's words seriously at the time, perceiving them as an off-color jest. He wrote he was performing, surely he thought. None of this was real, now we know better. Bush withdrew from public view for three years, sharing with People Magazine how he fell completely apart and struggled with resentment and anger. However, he eventually returned to the public eye in 2019, speaking candidly about his mistakes and the lessons he learned from the experience. He admitted that he should have taken a stand and condemned Trump's behavior rather than simply going along with it. That incident sparked a larger conversation about toxic masculinity and misogyny 
in our society. It highlighted the prevalence of locker room talk and the normalization of objectifying women. It also shed light on the unequal treatment of men and women in similar situations. While Trump faced little consequence, Bush's career was severely impacted. Now we're diving into a major controversy that rocked the world of basketball. Remember Donald Sterling, the previous owner of LA Clippers? Well, in 2014, he made some comments that cost him a lot. A tape was leaked, allegedly recorded by V. Stiviano, his rumored girlfriend, where Sterling reportedly instructed her to refrain from posting pictures with people of color on Instagram. He was quoted saying, you can sleep with black men, bring them in, do whatever you want. All I ask is you don't promote it and don't bring them to my games. I mean, as we can all, I'm sure, assume, this led to a wave of backlash with his team members protesting by wearing their warm-up tees out inside out, effectively hiding the team's logo. The Clippers lost numerous sponsorships and Sterling faced strong criticism from several notable figures in the African American community, including President Barack Obama. Obama remarked when ignorant folks want to advertise their ignorance, you don't really have to do anything, just let them talk. That's what happened here. He expressed his faith in NBA Commissioner Adam Silver that he would handle that situation. The fallout from Sterling's comments was immense. He was forced to sell the LA Clippers for $2 billion, endured a fine of $2.5 million, and was banned for life from the NBA. As of 2017, Sterling and his wife were trying to reverse the ban. In 2016, Michael Richards, also recognized as Kramer from the hit TV show Seinfeld, was performing at the Laugh Factory when he was heckled by an audience member who happened to be of African American descent. What transpired next shocked everyone present. According to TMZ, Richards lost his cool, responding with a racially charged outburst that lasted three minutes, in which he shouted, throw him out. Look, there is a... Richards later made a public apology on the late show with David Letterman, expressing remorse for his uncontrolled outburst on stage and assuring everyone he was not a racist. Sounds like something a racist would say. The incident had a significant impact on Richards, who has since then kept a low profile, reflecting on the incident years later on Jerry Seinfeld's Comedians in Cars with Coffee. Richards expressed regret over his behavior, acknowledging that he should have stayed focused on entertaining the audience rather than lashing out in anger. He admitted, I think I worked selfishly and not selflessly. It's it's not about me, it's about the audience. Now that's a lesson I learned seven years ago when I blew it in the comedy club and lost my temper. In the years following the incident, Richards has largely stayed out of the public eye, as he should. Next up, Transformers star Shia LaBeouf is no stranger to encounters with the law, but one incident in particular came at an extraordinary cost. LaBeouf's 2017 arrest in Savannah, Georgia for disorderly conduct and public intoxication brought him significant attention when a video of him hurling abuses at a police officer went viral. This resulted in a court-ordered 10-week rehab stint. The following year, in an interview with Esquire, he revealed that a series of arrests, erratic public behavior, and personal issues related to PTSD had left him marginalized in Hollywood. He said, I'm run out. No one's giving me a shot right now. Despite these setbacks, LaBeouf remained steadfast in his determination to revive his career. His co-star from The Peanut Butter Falcon, Zachary Goatsagan, was instrumental in this journey. LaBeouf recounts a conversation where Zachary, who has Down syndrome, told him, you're already famous, this is my chance and you're ruining it. Reflecting on this, LaBeouf admitted, to hear him say that he was disappointed in me probably changed the course of my life. He praised Goatsagan's honesty saying, Zach can't not shoot straight and bless him for it, cause in that moment I needed a straight shooter who I couldn't argue with. LaBeouf's performance in the Peanut Butter Falcon received critical acclaim, with critics labeling it as his comeback role. Next, the golfing legend Tiger Woods found himself in the spotlight back in 2009, and not for his golf prowess, but for a scandal involving his marriage. Life. It was reported that Ellen Nordegren, Wood's wife at the time, chased him out of their home with a golf club upon discovering his infidelity. In a leaked voicemail that emerged shortly after, Woods could be heard pleading with the woman, as reported by the New York Post, to remove her name from her phone. This was seemingly an attempt to prevent Nordegren from contacting her. Following the scandal, Woods confessed to having extramarital affairs with roughly 120 women. The fallout was immense, leading to a divorce from Nordegren, a drastic decline in his golf performance, and the loss of significant endorsements, among them Nike. Woods later sought treatment for sex addiction. 10 years would pass before Woods would clinch another major championship, winning the Masters in 2019. Tiger
Tiger Woods is widely recognized as one of the greatest golfers in history with numerous major championship wins under his belt. However, his reputation took a hit with that infidelity news. The scandal rocked the sports world and brought attention to the issue of extramarital affairs among athletes. In 1998, a huge controversy swept the nation when Monica Lewinsky, former White House intern, found herself at the heart of a scandal. Her ex-friend Linda Tripp had secretly recorded their private calls and handed these tapes over to the FBI. These recordings suggested that Lewinsky had been involved in an affair with the then President Bill Clinton, sparking a media storm that left a lasting impact on Lewinsky's career, but obviously not Clinton's. Christian Bale, the renowned actor, found himself in a precarious situation during the filming of Terminator Salvation. A leaked recording captured him in a heated argument with the film's director of photography, who had unintentionally intruded on a scene. Bale, lost in a tirade of expletives, demanded the DP to be dismissed from the set. Following the leak, the actor issued a public apology on LA's K-Rock radio station, admitting his behavior was unjustifiable and acknowledging that he had behaved poorly. Bale explained that his outburst resulted from being deeply committed to his character, having blurred the lines between reality and fiction. However, his sister expressed concern about his behavior referencing a previous incident where he had a similar outburst in front of her family. While Bale continues to feature in critically acclaimed films, such incidents have raised eyebrows and led to speculation about his future in the industry. Okay, in an episode of her podcast, Broad Ideas, Rachel shares a deeply personal story about a recent professional setback she faced. She opens up about a peculiar circumstance where her candid conversation about her private life, specifically aspects of her sex life, led to an unexpected job loss. Surprisingly, this open and honest dialogue about sex resulted in her losing a job she had already secured. She described that as the first time she encountered such a situation in her professional career. Number 10, Ezra Miller. The Flash star has made themselves unhirable after a string of arrests in Hawaii, which caused quite a stir on social media and turned the internet against them. It's easy to see why, as their latest arrest on the 19th of April was for second degree attack. Police say that around 1.30 AM, the actor was asked to leave a venue and quickly became irate, reportedly throwing a chair, which struck a 26 year old female on the forehead. In fact, the police say that they have received at least 10 calls about the actor since the 7th of March, with complaints ranging from filming people at a gas station to refusing to leave the sidewalk area of a restaurant. Miller has also been charged with disorderly conduct and harassment after an altercation the previous night at a karaoke bar in Hilo. Miller has since been released released from jail pending further investigation, but let's just say that it doesn't look good. Number 9, Will Smith. The actor shocked fans, viewers, and Chris Rock when he walked onto the stage at the 2022 Academy Awards and slapped the comedian across the face, then casually just walked back to his seat. The incident occurred while Rock was introducing the award for best documentary, and he joked about Jada Pinkett Smith's haircut. It was then that Smith silently got up on stage, walked over to Rock, and slapped him across the face on live television. The shocking moment not only got him banned from the Oscars for the next 10 years, but has already cost Smith several projects which have either been cancelled altogether or shelved in the fallout from that infamous slap. For example, Apple ended up delaying the release of his much-awaited film Anticipation following the incident. Netflix also canned a sequel to his 2017 action film Bright, although they claim that this cancellation was unrelated to the slap. And there are also additional projects Smith had lined up that have been getting smacked down, leading many to believe that his career will never fully recover. Number 8, Chrissy Teigen. 35-year-old cookbook author faced heavy criticism this year following reports of cyberbullying. Many celebrities came forward to accuse her, including Lindsay Lohan, Farrah Abraham, and Project Runway star Michael Costello. Teigen publicly apologized for her past behavior multiple times, including a lengthy post on Medium, which she shared on social media. She also opened up about being put in the cancel club following the controversy. Teigen wrote on Instagram in July, going Going outside sucks and just doesn't feel right. Being at home alone with my mind makes my depressed head race. She ended her post jokingly asking if there was a cancel club reunion that she could attend. From there, Tegan was dealt a huge blow after reports circulated that retail giant Bloomingdale's had pulled out of a deal that they had in place with her. Macy's also said that it was not actively selling her cookbook, Cravings, on their website. And it's difficult to see how her career will recover from such bad publicity. Number 7, Chris Noth. Following the release of 
City spin-off and just like that, two women came forward to accuse the actor of two separate incidents of SA that occurred between 2004 and 2015. The next day, a third woman, an actress and director Zoe Lister-Jones, accused the actor of misconduct on the set of Law & Order. Not has since been dropped by his talent agency and will not be appearing in the upcoming episodes of The Equalizer. The actor denied the allegations in a statement to Us Weekly, saying, quote, the encounters were consensual. But it was much too late because eventually his scenes in and just like that were deleted, making his character's death scene his final appearance in the series. And that seems like it's pretty much it for his career in Hollywood. Number six, Drew Barrymore. Drew faced intense blowback for her decision to resume taping her talk show despite the months long writer's strike that was going on this year. And this is what made her wildly unpopular. According to SAG After Rules, as long as hosts or guests don't discuss or promote struck work, then she would have been in the clear, since the network code agreement allows daytime hosts to perform hosting duties. But the thing is that her show operates with union writers, so new episodes would have required moving forward without their writers on staff. At the time, the WGA condemned her decision. They said Drew Barrymore should not be on the air while her writers are on strike fighting for a fair deal. In reality, shows like this cannot operate without writing, and that is struck work. But what really got people angry about this was all the hypocrisy, seeing that back in May, Drew stepped down as host of the MTV Movie and TV Awards in a show of support and solidarity to the striking writers. At the time, she said, I have listened to the writers, and in order to fully respect them, I will pivot from hosting the MTV Movie and TV Awards live in solidarity with the strike. But then only a few months later, it seemed as though she had gone back on her stance, which is why she was immediately labeled a scab. Number five, Selena Gomez. The actress and singer completely lost her cool when fans started attacking her new boyfriend, Benny Blanco. Now she got herself in hot water for defending him and going on an embarrassing Instagram rant professing her love for him. So all of this crazy drama started when she confirmed that she's been secretly dating the music producer for about six months and apparently no one knew a thing about it. But as soon as she revealed their relationship on Instagram, her own fans started attacking her in the comment section and things got heated very quickly. People accused Benny Benny of not treating Selena well and disrespecting her in the past. They dug up an interview that he did in 2020 where he called Selena a cookie cutter pop artist while praising her ex-boyfriend Justin Bieber. And if you watch this interview, it's pretty obvious that he doesn't think too highly of her as an artist because he also makes fun of her makeup line and insinuates that she's just not a serious musician. But when fans brought this to Selena's attention, she got extremely defensive and started ranting about how she just doesn't care. She wrote, he is still better than anyone I've ever been with. Facts. She also told another upset fan who said that Benny has put a curse on her that he has been the best thing that's ever happened to her. And the fighting did not stop there. From that point on, it only got worse. Number four, Drake Bell. The former Nickelodeon star caused a lot of panic earlier in the year when he was declared missing and endangered by police. He was then found the following day and claimed that he had just left his phone in the car for the night and that's why he wasn't answering. But this whole incident had people wondering, is Drake Bell really okay? He had fans worrying about about his mental health with all of his recent antics. Back in December, he was spotted inhaling substances out of a balloon while his son was in the backseat of his car. Eyewitnesses said that he was inhaling and deflating this balloon for more than half an hour while his son seemed to be asleep. A couple weeks later, he checked into rehab to try to get treatment. Soon after that, his wife of five years announced that she was leaving him and moving to Florida with their son. She revealed that she was filing for divorce and a source told Page Six that she had enough of her husband's antics. Quote, they had some incredible times before, but he needs to focus on being healthy and they'll always be great co-parents in the future. So for a lot of fans, the unraveling of Drake's public persona is very upsetting to see. Number three, Amanda Bynes. Although the actress has been out of the spotlight for several years now, she resurfaced on social media last month and looks completely different, leaving fans to wonder what on earth was going on with Amanda Bynes. In the latest video she posted, it is clear that she now looks completely unrecognizable. Amanda recently went on Instagram Live to talk about the release of her new podcast, and fans were shocked with her platinum blonde mullet, blue eyebrows, septum ring, 
and the heart-shaped tattoo that she had on her face. While it's true that she has been away from the spotlight for a long time, she looks like a totally different person now, especially if you compare it to the way that she used to look in the 2000s, back when she was still acting. So she's clearly doing better these days, considering that she is trying to get herself back out there. But that's also come with a lot of hardships and after a long battle with her mental health. And while a lot of fans are dying to support her comeback, there are some who are genuinely concerned about her. Many were asking where and when she seemed to get treatment, and they even compared her meltdown to the same one that Britney Spears went through. One user commented that it's sad to see the life gone from her eyes. So it's safe to say that there has been just as much positive feedback as there has been negative. Number two, Garrett Hedlund. The star of Friday Night Lights, Tron Legacy, and the United States vs. Billy Holiday was sadly arrested for public intoxication after he created a ruckus in Franklin County after he created a ruckus in Franklin County, Tennessee, and he was eventually released on a $2,000 bond. The man who called the authorities on the star also claimed that he attempted to jump out of a car earlier in the day. The arrest occurred just one day after the news broke that Garrett had split from his girlfriend at the time, Emma Roberts, with whom he shares a two-year-old son named Rhodes. At the time, he was also going through a series of other legal issues, and he was previously arrested on two DUI charges in February back in 2020. 20. He was arraigned the same month and was released after posting a $100,000 bond. Garrett was then sued for negligence after allegedly causing a head-on collision because he passed out behind the wheel of his car and he ran a solid red light at a high rate of speed. His blood alcohol level tested at 0.36%, which is four times the legal limit. There were also open bottles of alcoholic beverages in the car that he tried to discard before the police arrived. So clearly he was still coping with the stress of the impending lawsuit. And coming in at number one, Doja Cat. The singer made headlines for all the wrong reasons when she started beefing with Stranger Things star Noah Schnapp, all for revealing a private conversation where she asked to be hooked up with his Stranger Things co-star Joseph Quinn. A screenshot of their exchange went viral after it was shared by Noah in a deleted TikTok, much to Doja's annoyance. The 26 year old singer then went live on TikTok calling these 17 year olds actions degrading, exploitative, and super embarrassing. She claimed that what he did was so unbelievably socially unaware and whack. Even went as far to call him a snake, saying that he shared information that she did not feel comfortable with him sharing. So how do you think people responded to this drama? Well, everyone was surprised with just how much Doja blamed Noah, considering his age and the fact that in previous tweets, she has openly expressed her attraction towards Joseph, but in a lighthearted way. People largely supported Noah in the feud, no surprise there, and Doja ended up losing 200,000 Instagram followers in the week after she posted that video. Number 10, Percy Hines White. When the Netflix series Wednesday premiered last year, the world collectively agreed that it was fantastic. It was dark, fun, mysterious, and it was well written for the most part. The only side plot that really added nothing to the show was the love triangle between Wednesday, the coffee shop boy, and Percy Hines White. Percy is a young up and coming actor who's appeared in plenty of TV shows and films in his short career. Wednesday skyrocketed him to a new level of recognition, which might be the cause of the allegations that were thrown his way earlier this year. An unnamed woman claimed that he mistreated her when they were living in Toronto. In June, he posted on his Instagram telling people that he needed to clear something up. According to Percy, he doesn't actually know who this woman is, and because of her misinformation, his family and friends were doxxed and received threats to end their lives. He continued to say that in addition to people using underage photos and examples of him acting in character to present him as hateful, he concluded his post by saying that the misinformation was distressing as well as thanked those who supported his efforts. After the hashtag cancel Percy, gained momentum on Twitter, the accusations began to grow. So much hate just from a rumor started on Twitter when there's no legal accusations, proof of anything, it's just fans gone wild. Number 9, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart was set to host the Oscars back in 2019, but he was fired last minute. After a stand-up bit and a series of tweets had resurfaced that painted him as anti-LGBTQ+. In 2009, Kevin sent out a series of tweets that contained jokes about his feelings about his son potentially coming out in the future, making comments that he would break a dollhouse over his head if he saw him playing with it. He said some harsher stuff that I will not repeat and no one should look up because it's a little bit rough, and I can understand why a lot of people found the comments rude and damaging, because they were. At the time, the 
comments didn't go unnoticed, but at the time they flew under the radar in terms of media coverage. He then repeated the jokes on stage in his seriously funny special. There are also a few homophobic jokes written into the script of the film Get Hard, which I have seen and I do agree it's a little bit much. In 2015, when asked about the tweets, he told people that he would not be repeating the jokes that he made today, but that the only reason was because the times had been too sensitive. When he was announced as a host in 2018, the internet put a case together as to why he shouldn't be the host. The Oscars were forced to fire him in the role due to the alarming number of hate mail they were receiving on a daily basis. Before they actually let him go, they did give him an option to either apologize and own up or be let go. When Hart released a statement on Instagram, he decided to pass on an apology because he had apparently addressed it several times and acknowledged the rights and wrongs of the incident. The statement only led to more online outrage and sparked a debate, but the next day he released a separate statement apologizing for his actions and words and especially to the community he insulted. Number 8. Liam Neeson Liam is a prolific actor. He might be a terrible dad on screen, but he is a great actor. Unfortunately, his acting skills were nowhere to be found when he was being interviewed by The Independent. As part of the interview, the conversation veered into life versus art and if there was anything that had happened to him in his real life that influenced his film roles. This prompted Liam to tell the person interviewing him that he once walked the streets with a stabby jabby pen for weeks just hoping to take his anger out after someone close to him was physically mistreated by a person of color. Liam said that he was ashamed of his actions, but his remarks sparked widespread outrage. The interview was to promote the film Cold Pursuit, which is exactly what it sounds like, and the interviewer asked many questions, including how his character turns to anger, and he replied, something primal kicks in. He then went on a tangent about what one goes through when a family member close to you is hurt and there is nothing that can be done. He told the story that I can't repeat because of the heavy subject matter, but it was so intense that journalists interviewing him told BBC News that anyone hearing the thoughts he was reporting here would be shocked and appalled in many ways. He himself has said that he's ashamed to think of the way that he used to say and do things, and he is, of course, shocked at how awful he became. He received a ton of backlash, but so far he hasn't been cancelled. Number 7. Casey Affleck Casey has had an interesting career. Being the brother of Ben Affleck has had its advantages. However, he was able to build a career for himself away from his brother to the point where he now has an Oscar for Manchester by the Sea. One year after he got that Oscar, he gave his first candid interview about the allegations that he had mistreated two women on the set of his independent film I'm Still Here. Affleck directed and produced the mockumentary and admitted in an interview that the teleprompter glitched and now it is a blue screen. Affleck directed and produced the mockumentary and admitted in an interview that the set was unprofessional. He admitted that he was the main contributor to the situation and took responsibilities for his actions. He then admitted that he made major mistakes and used poor judgment. It was one of the first movies that he had ever actually directed and he was unsure of what his role was according to himself. Meanwhile, the actual allegations range from Casey sneaking into bed with a woman to himself and the star of the film Joaquin Phoenix locking themselves in a hotel room with some ladies of the night. Affleck denied the allegations for a long time, but after admitting to his misdeeds, nothing really happened. Like He was cancelled in the eyes of the media and by his fans, but he still works, he writes, he produces films to this day. It's in smaller capacities, but still. Number 6. Tom Cruise While Tom may be an action movie star and was once a young Hollywood heartthrob, he actually has a massive temper. According to both former assistants as well as several co-stars from his past, Cruise is a regular toddler and is known to throw tantrums being set off by small things. His former manager, Eileen Berlin, presented him with a gift on his 19th birthday. She gave him an album of teen magazine articles that were written about him, and apparently that set him off. He told his manager that he considered himself an adult, not a teen idol, and then whipped the book in her face. Another example of Tom's aggression was on display during the filming of the sequel to Top Gun, Maverick. During this time, Tom and the rest of the film crew were tasked to film on an actual aircraft carrier that was still in use by the military. One of the crew posted on Twitter calling out the audacity of Tom's behavior. He tweeted that Tom Cruise was actually on their ship telling people not to talk or look at him. After a few choice words, the crewmate made it very clear that Tom would never be welcome aboard the vessel again. These are just two examples though. Tom has blown up on film crews several times in the past, to the point where his Mission Impossible 2 co-stars are constantly scared of him on set and what he may freak out about next. Number 5. Taylor Swift Unpopular opinion here. Taylor's tyranny of torment must end now. Taylor Swift has made a name for herself as a person who thrives on the ending of a relationship. Since the late 2000s, Taylor has been making millions in the music industry. Her songs like Love Story and 22 are anthems to many. The catchy tunes tend to come from a place of so-called heartache, however. Taylor has thanked her exes on several occasions for inspiring the songs that made her who she is today. People like Tom Hiddleston, Harry Styles, Jake Gyllenhaal all have 
had a part to play in the inception of some true bops. The argument can and should be made that Taylor just needs to chill. She has made several songs that were good without the need to berate an ex and some of those songs are pretty revealing. Imagine if after you broke up with someone there was a song that popped up on your phone by U2 called Why They Left You. Number 4 Ariana Grande. Now she's got one less problem without you and honestly we'd probably be fine with that. Ariana rose to fame on the hit Nick series Victorious before spinning off and becoming a pop singing sensation. While she may be a good girl and good impressionist on screen, just ask Jimmy Fallon, behind the scenes she's reportedly cold, quiet, and a lot like Taylor Swift she hates on her exes through song. When she broke up with Saturday Night Live alumni Pete Davidson, she released a song called Pete Davidson, blatantly singing and trashing about her ex fiance. The song made her a lot of money, of which Pete received none. If you're gonna trash someone, at least give them a little piece of that cheddar. On top of this, her behavior in general has been pretty chaotic. She once left a meet and greet because she didn't like the way the photos were turning out. Those people paid hundreds of dollars and she was like, yeah, thank you next. In 2015, a video surfaced of Ariana visiting a Californian donut shop. The owners were beyond excited to see her until she began licking donuts and then putting them back on the shelves. According to the shop owners, those donuts were never paid for and they had to be thrown away. They really should have preserved them and sold them online though, because some people are weird. This incident also got her nixed from performing at a White House event despite multiple public apologies. The darkest of stories comes from a Hollywood insider though and has not been confirmed to be 100% true. The man in question was working with Ariana at a signing event and apparently she was all smiles until the event was over and they got in the elevator. According to them, her first words as the doors closed were, I hope they all freaking perish. Only she didn't say perish. Kinda makes you realize why Nickelodeon stars aren't as popular as adults. Number 3 Mariah Carey Mariah Carey may echo in your skull around this time of year, but according to most you should really keep that space in your head reserved for someone else. Maybe Michael Bublé. Mariah has been known to be a bit of a diva over the years, apparently making outlandish requests and taking part in some really strange moments. For instance, when giving birth to her children, Mariah had the doctors play a live version of her song Fantasy, so that her voice was the first thing that they heard in the world. Unfortunately it was on shuffle and it played Bird as the Word. No, but that would have been fantastic and scarred them for life. She's walked out of presidential events because she wasn't the center of attention, she makes people speak to her with a whiteboard the night before performances to preserve her voice, and literally made someone roll out a red carpet for her when she walks out of vehicles. Like that lady from Guardians of the Galaxy. Just It's literally someone's job to crouch down and go ah, 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 just all day. Needless to say, she's currently classified as a diva, but honestly we should classify her as cancelled because all I want for Christmas is a new song. Number 2 Jared Leto Jared Leto is an interesting fellow. Hey, it rhymes. He started his own religious group, he brings a new meaning to the word method acting, and let's face it, he kinda sucks. Over the past few years, reports from Jared's fellow actors are anything but positive. When he was the Joker, he left his fellow castmates used adult devices, pig heads, and live snakes in their trailers as gifts. He was trying to stay method as the Joker, but anyone on the receiving end of those gifts just wish he would go away. On top of that, he's been known to stay in character, meaning that if he's playing someone who's angry or silent, that's how he's gonna be the entire time time he's on set. This guy hasn't really been questioned for his actions at any point in recent history, only being called a weirdo and then we just leave it at that. With his career still well on the rise, here's hoping Jared will eventually be called out for good and added to Hollywood's no-no list. Number 1 Morgan Freeman Yes, the voice of God himself, Morgan Freeman, has been a soothing soul for many, many years. To this day, families can hear Morgan narrate the world around them in an immersive 360 IMAX screen at the Science Center in Toronto. He may be a comfort to some, but a According to a few women, Morgan is actually their nightmare. Morgan has been accused of inappropriate behavior on multiple occasions between 1991 and 2015. According to one production assistant from the film Going in Style, which is a bank heist movie featuring himself, Michael Caine, and Alan Arkin, Freeman subjected her to unwanted touching and comments about her figure and clothing on a near daily basis. Gentlemen, lend me your ear! This move is rarely well received, get a new move! According to her, in one instance, Freeman attempted to lift her skirt and asked to see her underclothes. She was not the only one to speak out though. A senior member of the production staff on the film, Now You See Me Too, told CNN that Freeman harassed her and her female assistant on numerous occasions, making similar comments to figures in clothing. I could go on with more and more examples, but to save some time, I will boil it down for you. Morgan
Morgan Freeman is a little creepy and I'm sorry to say it, but this dude needs to retire as soon as possible. Number 10, Thomas Gibson. Thomas made a name for himself, starring as one of the leads of the series, Criminal Minds. He was on the show for a few years, and in that time he made a few problems for those unfortunate enough to be staff members of the series. There were some issues over the years that would have warranted some actions, like screaming at producers and writers for not doing a good job, but the incident that got him kicked off the show for good involved, well, a kick. In 2016, Thomas was swiftly fired from the series after an incident with a writer named Virgil Williams. An internal investigation revealed that Thomas kicked Virgil one day during production of an episode that Gibson was directing. As I said, this was not the first incident on set that really should have resulted in some kind of a punishment though. In 2013, he pleaded no contest to No No Juice related reckless driving after being arrested on suspicion of a DUI, and three years before that, he allegedly shoved an assistant director named Ian Wolfe during a late night location scene. That led to the studio ordering Gibson to take eight hours of anger management. According to most people on set, Thomas was a wild card. You know, some days he'd be friendly and accommodating, and then the next day he was ballistic. Number nine, Joaquin Phoenix. We understand a dedication to one's craft, and Joaquin is just a prime example. Joaquin's acting career has been going steady since he first appeared in the 1989 comedy Parenthood when he was in his mid-teens. While he's seen as one of the greatest actors in recent history, his reputation on set was tarnished thanks to a little freak out while filming the 2018 solo flick Joker. He appeared on Jimmy Kimmel Live to promote the film when Jimmy played a behind the scenes clip of Joaquin getting loud and angry at a man named Larry and the constant whispering behind the cameras before dropping an F-bomb and storming off the set. When the cameras came back to the studio, Joaquin was just frozen in shock. He was clearly not expecting that clip to ever see the light of day. He explained that Larry was a cinematographer who was teasing Joaquin off set earlier in the day, calling him a diva and referring to him as Cher. In fact, during his onset outburst, you can hear him say, calling me Cher, how is that an insult? He then explained that there's a lot of pressure on set, especially in a closed space like the apartment from the scene, and he apologized to the audience for having to see him behave in such a manner, which was met with applause. At the end of the day, he's a performer, and no harm came from this outburst, so if Larry's cool with it, we're cool with it. Number eight, Bill Murray Lake Toss. Bill Murray's gonna be on this list more than once, and for good reasons. For this entry, we're talking about the film What About Bob and its extremely toxic set while filming. Bill Murray was really getting on his co-star's nerves Richard Dreyfuss from Jaws, literally berating and bullying this man between takes to get the best performance out of him. In the years since, he claimed that Richard encouraged him to do this, but Richard claims that that never happened and is a complete lie. Considering the incident that this entry is actually about though, he got off pretty easy. On the same set, Bill got into an altercation with producer Laura Ziskin, a woman who is so respected that she has an achievement award named after her. This woman was subject to Bill's diva behavior and one day during a disagreement, Bill Murray picked her up and just tossed her into a lake. When describing the event, she claims that it was playful, but according to everyone else on the set, it was just the wrong word to use. Number seven, Jenna Ortega. Jenna participated in one of the most popular streaming shows of this year on Netflix, playing Wednesday. Wednesday Adams in Wednesday. The series really helped launch Jenna's already growing career, and of course, the series was picked up for a second season. However, it seems that Jenna may end up writing that entire season herself, because the writers of season one just didn't do a great job according to her. A while back and before the writer's strike, Jenna made comments about having to put her foot down on the set of Wednesday. According to her, the writing was just odd, and honestly, Jenna made so many good points. She felt that the things that Wednesday was doing made no sense. She was involved in a love triangle that was just weird and honestly distracted from all the good parts of the show, and some of the lines that she was supposed to say were cut after she expressed concerns. There was a line of dialogue that saw Wednesday say the words, oh my god, I love it, ugh, I can't believe I just said that, to which Jenna said, no. Wednesday is not some valley girl with an emo side. She chops the heads off siblings if they let her. She claims that a ton of writers will agree that she is difficult and unprofessional at times because that was the only way to make her character work. She'd literally change the dialogue during a take and then the writers were just constantly confused. Ortega has claimed to be very protective of her character and has every intention to make season two better in every way, dropping any love stories surrounding Wednesday and instead opting to dive in deep on the dark and macabre that Tim Burton is really known for. The writers released sarcastic statements claiming that Jenna should really just write the next season herself since she's so good at it. Okay, let her do it. It's probably going to be great. 
Number six, Justin Bieber. In 2015, Justin was performing on the Today Show, debuting his new song, What Do You Mean? During his performance, he got super excited and started dancing while singing, you know, one normally would. But moments later, he was caught on air dissing the camera operator, saying that he might as well not dance since the cameras don't even move. He said next time he won't dance, it seems like a waste of effort. He was visibly annoyed as he ended his time on the show. Fans of Justin were very quick to question his aggression in the moment. Before he was cut off by a commercial break, Justin starts to rant about what he even does this for and if they're just gonna, well then, and then he was cut off. Not long after this on-air mishap, Justin actually announced that he was gonna take a little break from music. The two seemed to be unrelated, but hey man, you never know. Maybe he had some real regrets when it comes to scolding a camera person that did nothing to you before that. But come on, out of all the mistreatment scandals surrounding Justin Bieber, this one's the silliest. When Justin appeared on the set of CSI, he actually upset an entire crew with his behavior. According to several eyewitness accounts, Justin locked a producer in a closet out of frustration and put his fist through a cake that was on the craft service table. Justin dismissed these claims as baseless rumors, but like a lot of people saw him doing that, so. I don't know, you be the judge. Number five, Barbara Cochran. Ah, Shark Tank, what a wonderful program. Seeing some up and coming entrepreneurs get their start thanks to the endorsement and partnership of the Sharks. One of the Sharks, Barbara Cochran, was blasted online after a resurfaced clip showed her saying how much she loved to fire people. Firing someone is a difficult conversation, it doesn't usually end well for both people involved. However, for Barbara, it's her favorite thing in the entire world. These comments resurfaced as there is a labor shortage across the US, so that didn't help. In an interview on the Diary of a CEO podcast, she revealed that she loves firing people, especially on Fridays. What she loves to do is pop by someone's desk on Wednesday, book an appointment for Friday. Instead of giving them a proper reason for firing though, she'll actually just tell them that you know she's not really sure why, they just don't really fit with the company. I don't know what makes this woman think it is a fun thing to be fired, but nonetheless, people are fuming. Many fans simply wonder if she owns a Dalmatian coat. More than likely. Number four, Christina Aguilera. There have been a few instances of Christina being a menace to her staff or just people that she's worked with in the past. Today, we're gonna focus on her time as a judge on The Voice. According to several sources close to the show, she was a nightmare to work with. Apparently, she always shows up late and just doesn't seem to care or apologize for holding up filming of the show. To make things worse, she is constantly arguing with Adam Levine. As early as 2012, insiders told production on The Voice that they much preferred Adam Levine to Christina. Apparently, the makeup crew of the show acts as a NASCAR pit team. Every time herself and Adam get heated, whether it's on or off camera, she's directed to the makeup team to cool off. They then apply product to her face like she's Ricky Bobby in the middle of a race. According to producers, she made outrageous demands, including the introduction of a foot massager to the staff. Someone's only job on set was to massage Christina's feet every 30 minutes. No thank you. Number three, Bill Murray and Harold Remus. Now, it may come as a shock to you that two of the four members of the legendary Ghostbusters just kind of despised each other. But it turns out that this is very much the case. While filming Bill's more popular film Groundhog Day, it turns out that the star was in a rough place. According to the crew, he tormented Harold, the director of the project, constantly, showing up late, being consistently unavailable, and just being overall really mean. Apparently, the main cause for concern was just Bill's overall feelings about the movie. He took issue with the way it was filmed, some of the dialogue he had to say, and just seemed to disagree with Harold about everything. Despite their collaborations before this on movies like Ghostbusters and Caddyshack, they just did not see eye to eye on anything. Bill wanted this movie to be more serious and philosophical, but Harold had to constantly remind Mind him, it was a comedy. At the end of the day, the constant arguments made a terrible time on set. Number two, Katherine Heigl. Kathy was riding high back in 2007. The former Grey's Anatomy star not only won an Emmy for Best Supporting Actress in a Drama Series, but she also began transitioning to the big screen with the success of her first feature film, Knocked Up, alongside comedy legend Seth Rogen. Now, unfortunately, her rise to the top quickly became a free fall into an active volcano following an ill-fated Vanity Fair interview the following January. In the interview, Catherine made a move that still has people scratching their heads to this day. She 
openly bashed the film that made her famous, claiming that it painted women as shrew, humorless, and uptight, while also placing blame on Seth Rogen for writing the men as lovable, goofy, and fun. The film still sits at an impressive 89% on Rotten Tomatoes because, now while she might claim the project was problematic, the final product is just a fun love story filled with good jokes and performances and a good story. Seth felt betrayed by the comments as they never had a fight on set and it never seemed like she was uncomfortable at any point. These comments, combined with some negativity towards her Grey's Anatomy writers, caused her agents to drop her as a client and her time in Hollywood quickly came to a screeching halt. And at number one, Bill Murray and Lucy Liu. Sony's first foray into the world of Charlie's Angels was massively successful thanks to its stars, Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and of course, Lucy Liu as the titular Angels. This movie was filled with action, comedy, and one of the weirdest performances ever given by Crispin Glover. That dude needs help. One interesting addition to the cast, though, was the inclusion of Bill Murray as the main man behind the mic. Bosley. Now apparently the set was anything but a comedy though after Bill found out his scene was rewritten while he was away. In an interview with the news outlet Deadline, Lucy Liu spoke up about her time on set and Bill Murray's outburst. Apparently Bill was away for a family event when a scene needed to be refilmed and instead of using a stand-in, they just decided that it could go on without Murray's character being involved. So the scene was filmed and that was that. When he returned to find that the changes were made while he was gone, he was furious. He reportedly shouted at half of the crew, including Lucy herself. At the time, she wasn't sure why he was aiming his comments at her, she didn't write the scene, she wasn't the director, and she asked Bill if he was talking to her, and apparently that sent him into a meltdown. She decided to speak out on Bill's behavior, and he was ultimately written out of the sequel. Lucy's pretty proud for speaking her mind, despite being a relatively unknown actor at the time, and so far it looks like Bill's career has suffered from it, because Lucy was just the first of many celebrities to comment on his behavior, but we could do a whole top 10 list about Bill Murray. Number 10, Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro was brought to court thanks to an ex-assistant and he lost. Robert's production company was found liable this past week for gender discrimination and retaliation and were ordered to pay $1.3 million to Graham Chase Robinson. While Robert himself was not found guilty, his company was. Graham accused De Niro of workplace mistreatment during her time as his assistant and financial advisor. Between 2008 and 2019, her life was a living nightmare. Nightmare. Robert had apparently been subjecting her to inappropriate behavior on a lot of levels. The allegations range from Robert swearing and hurling insults to asking Robinson to scratch his back. Literally. He admitted to almost all of the accusations, but gave excuses for each one. For instance, it was only two back scratches, okay? No big deal. Robinson claimed that she quit during a full-on mental breakdown after being overwhelmed by the work and Robert's role as her boss. She's not worked in over four years despite applying for a reported 643 jobs. In that time, she estimated losing around $12 million, both monetarily and mentally. The jury calculated the exact amount that she would have earned had Robert not bullied her into submission, which was not $12 million, but like I said, somewhere closer to $1.3. That is still a lot of money. As I said, Robert De Niro was not personally responsible, so the payout came from his production company, but he has maintained that his assistant exaggerated their claims for profit. Number nine, Madonna. Madonna's voice is known around the world, but so much so in fact that she can be a bit mean from time to time. Not only have there been eyewitness accounts of her being rude to fans, but she is also a bit stingy when it comes to her staff. A few years back, an anonymous source revealed that when one of Madonna's dancers broke her arm during practice, instead of being more concerned and helping, she had a full-on meltdown, berating the dancer for being so bad at their job. There was also allegations that she said there will be no fat country singers in her presence, only she didn't say re-singers. Another source backed these stories up and added that Madonna does not pay very well, but she knows that she can pay people to work grueling hours for low income because, hey, she's Madonna. There are probably some people out there who would work for a turkey sandwich just to be someone's assistant. White bread with lettuce, please. The source agreed that if there is one common theme with Madonna and her staff, it's that her ego overshadows them and they're supposed to feel lucky to be in her presence. Neither source specified when they quit, but considering the stories, it sounded like they were with Madonna for quite some time. Number eight, 
Lizzo. It was recently revealed that a lawsuit was filed against the famous pop singer Lizzo, accusing her of creating a toxic work environment and mistreating her background dancers. The accusations range from fat shaming her crew to forcing them to eat strange fruit from strange places. Yum yum. One of the dancers, Crystal Davies, who is part of the lawsuit, was fired for secretly recording a meeting between herself and Lizzo. The meeting was about the dancers' performance on stage recently, and Lizzo apparently disliking the weight that she had been gaining, claiming that she wasn't committing to her role. According to the plaintiffs, Lizzo made them work ridiculous hours, including up to 12 hour rehearsal days. One of the dancers recounted an experience of having to use the washroom and being forced to do it in her pants while rehearsing so that she didn't lose any time. Like, hey, uh, Lizzo, if someone has to use the bathroom, just let them go. It took longer for them to get that poor woman a new pair of pants than it would have to just let her take five minutes. When the news broke, the world collectively turned on Lizzo and so far have believed every single word that has been said. Now, while Lizzo continues to deny the allegations, her career has gotten worse and worse. A lot of her live stage shows have been canceled, her music's been pulled from radio stations, and there is still currently an investigation taking place. So, it's not good. Not, it's not good for Lizzie. Number seven, Rihanna. A lot of one name artists on this list. Is it really a shock to learn that Rihanna does not talk to the hired help? Well, ignoring somebody is one of the meanest things that you can do to a person. Making them feel like they don't exist or are not even on the same level as you and they don't deserve to even be acknowledged. Like that just hurts. Most celebrities know how not to do that, but others seem to only have this negative setting in their soul. Over the years, it's been said that pop singing sensation Rihanna doesn't even look or speak to her staff. An anonymous source revealed that Rihanna literally refers to staff as the hired help. She also falls asleep when she's getting her makeup done, which must be great for everyone involved with that. Just Rihanna snoring in a chair. She's just warming up her vocal cords. It's fine. It's fine. Rihanna is also known for being pretty rude to her fans as well. One lady won backstage passes for herself and her family, but when they got back to do their meet and greet portion of the tickets, Rihanna didn't even look at them and asked one of her assistants to come sign something for them. Sitting in her makeup chair like a Disney villain, shooing people away. Number six, Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga is known for a lot of things. A star is born, her music career, but for ex-assistant Jennifer O'Neill, Lady Gaga is simply known as evil. O'Neill filed a lawsuit against her former boss in 2013 for $400,000, the money that she claimed that she was owed from her time working as Gaga's assistant. Clapping back against the claims, Gaga got heated. Try saying that 10 times fast. She counterclaimed that she was forced to do most of the assistant's work herself, complaining that she was forced to carry large bags to her room all by herself, like a normal person. O'Neill worked with Gaga for 13 months on a $75,000 salary and accompanied her on her Monster Ball World Tour. In trying to justify her actions as a boss, she admitted to partying late at night, sleeping in all day, and literally screaming in the streets. During the court hearing for the case, she also launched into an F-word fueled tirade, swearing over and over at Jennifer. Gaga was basically blasting this woman with allegations and just claiming that everything she was saying was false. Gaga claimed that Jennifer was always made to be an equal on tour, where Jennifer claims to have been overwhelmed with work. Instead of paying O'Neill the damages, Gaga claimed that she was going to spread the wealth to the people that currently work for her, aka the ones who really deserve it. Eventually, they were able to settle the situation outside of court, but that exact dollar exchange is not known. Number five, Christian Bale. Rumors that the former Batman actor is mean to his co-stars and his crew have run rampant for years, ever since his infamous voice recording captured on the set of Terminator Judgment Day. For those of you who don't know, he shouted at a guy for being in his line of sight during a take. Basically it. However, a former publicist of Christian's named Harrison Chung shared a ton of behind the scenes stories, including the fact that Christian was a very mean person to the point where he literally made little kids cry when they approached him as fans. Instead of appreciating his reach and enjoying his time with fans, he reportedly responds to them with anger and a lecture about personal space. Chung claimed that working for Christian was a nightmare, so much so that he had to take years of therapy. There have been a few stories regarding Christian and his anger over the years, but making kids cry and forcing this guy to go to therapy? 
means there is seriously a problem with Christian Bale. Number 4. Ellen DeGeneres Ellen had one of the most successful daytime talk shows of all time right up until 2020. Her show became overwhelmed with accusations of toxic work environment from former employees. There were claims that Ellen's happy exterior was nothing more than a facade put in place to keep her audience on her team. A small bit of proof came when she accused Fifty Shades of Grey actress Dakota Johnson for not inviting her to a birthday party, and Dakota reminded her that she actually did do that, but she never got a response back. Fans started questioning this awkward moment, and the cracks in Ellen's appearance began to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually, an article was released containing testimonies from several former employees, so much so that she was forced to cancel herself and her show for good. Number 3. Kim Kardashian Kim Kardashian is arguably the most famous of her Kardashian sisters and would also seem to be the busiest. For example, Kim has four kids, a skincare line, her Skims brand that she attends law school, co-founded an equity team, and recently even hopped on the podcast train, in addition to filming her new reality show on Hulu. Now you may be asking yourself, how does one woman do all of this by herself? <laughs> she pays people to do her job, of course. She has multiple assistants and nannies to help her stay above this overwhelming workload, but has been known to treat them as lesser than. For instance, on several occasions, Kim and her daughter North would go to lunch, accompanied by their nanny, but Kim made her not only sit at a separate table far away from them, but she is known to make her nannies walk walk at least 10 feet away from them at all times, unless she has multiple people with her and then she makes them walk behind her like a flying V formation because it looks cool. If they walk near her or attempt to walk side by side, she just kind of blows up and screams at them behind closed doors. Needless to say, she's had many nannies over the years and has probably made them all cry at least once. Number 2. Kourtney Kardashian Now while Kim may not be the best boss in the world, Kourtney Kardashian is known as the absolute worst boss of all time. According to former nannies, Kourtney was by far the worst Kardashian to work for. Not only is she a neat freak, needing every single thing to be exactly where it needs to be, she is also known for being super cheap. Even once calling a grocery store while she was shopping to compare the price of a chicken breast, cause if anyone needs that extra 99 cents. It's Kourtney Kardashian. But this isn't the worst thing that she's done. At one point, Kourtney's daughter had bitten a nanny so hard that she had to quit, but instead of letting it go and taking responsibility for not teaching her daughter how to act properly, she berated the nanny, telling her that she should have said something to her daughter in the moment. Cause yes, blame the women that you're paying to raise your kids instead of the kid itself who probably has abandonment issues. Number 1. Kylie Jenner Kylie Jenner is the youngest of the Kardashian clan, but she is also extremely successful for her age. In 2019, she was on the cover of Forbes magazine as the youngest self-made billionaire ever following a partnership between her cosmetic brand and Ulta, which is a beauty salon company. This would allow the brand previously only available online and in stores that randomly popped up here and there to be placed on shelves in Ulta's 1,000 plus stores. Unfortunately, the true nature of where these products come from made people kind of step back a bit. Many employees at the factory that mix and package these makeups and beauty products have reported that they were never given proper safety equipment that you would require to do your job. Like they were only given hair nets, lab coats, and safety goggles, which meant that their hands were just good and free to get burned and their faces were as well. Workers would regularly report migraines, chemical burns, all that fun stuff. But if this isn't bad enough, they were also forced to act as human test subjects for Kylie's products. Kylie was so proud of her company not testing things on animals, but I believe testing things on people is just so much worse. Just a little bit evil. Just She's a super villain. Number 10. Tom Hardy versus Charlize Theron Mad Max Fury Road is a forgotten gem in cinema history. It featured little to no CGI despite having some insane visuals, and it also featured some stellar performances from its cast, including Nicholas Holt, Charlize Theron, and Tom Hardy. Charlize and Tom played the main characters, Furiosa and Max, and while their on-screen characters ended up working together in the end, on set there was a very different vibe. Tom had a bad habit of showing up late all the time. Meanwhile, Charlize was a brand new mother who would be there on time every day while her kids were forced to be taken care of by someone.
someone else. In a book called Blood, Sweat and Chrome, The Wild and True Story of Mad Max Fury Road, writer Kyle Buchanan shared an instance on set between Charlize and Tom. Everyone was on set at 8am ready to shoot except for Mr. Hardy. But to make a point, Charlize took her place and stayed there until Tom showed up. Three hours later. She didn't move a muscle and according to the crew she was beyond furious. When Tom finally showed up she asked him how he could be so disrespectful and said that they should find this CNX Tuesday $100,000 for every minute that he's held up the crew. Yeah she didn't say CNX Tuesday but the word she did say set Tom off. He rushed up to her and pulled out the whole what'd you say to me? thing, you know, like, oh, a big tough guy, I can't hear anything. Overall, Charlize felt very threatened by Tom and had to have an assistant follow her around on set as a buffer between the two. When the shoot wrapped, the tension was gone and things seemed to have gotten better, but the difficult shoot combined with the stress of the project is most likely the reason that there was never a Mad Max 2. Number 9. Ryan Gosling vs. Rachel McAdams The Notebook is considered to be one of the greatest romantic movies ever made in Hollywood. Oddly enough, the on-screen couple did not get along at all during the shoot. They would constantly fight on set and seem to have completely different ideas on how several scenes should be played out. One day in particular was pretty exciting for anyone who wasn't involved, you know, drama watchers who were sipping their tea. Ryan called over the director and demanded that Rachel be replaced by another actress to read her lines with him. In front of 150 crew members, he claimed that Rachel wasn't giving him anything to work with and the two would constantly yell on set. Their toxic on set feud somehow morphed into a toxic relationship that lasted for two years. Anyone who worked on the set blames them for constant schedule setbacks and creating just an overall difficult work environment. Number 8. LL Cool J vs Jamie Foxx Jamie Foxx has been a huge star in the world of Hollywood over the years, working with several acclaimed directors in every genre under the sun, but like most actors, Jamie had to start somewhere. And that somewhere was in the film Any Given Sunday from 1999, alongside Al Pacino, Cameron Diaz, Dennis Quaid, and of course, LL Cool J. Cool J and Jamie played teammates in the football centric flick and not only do their characters constantly fight on screen, but behind the scenes they had an actual brawl that ended in Miami County Police being called in. During one scene the two were scripted to fight and filmed the first two takes as planned, however some offset beef made its way in front of the camera when Jamie struck Cool J for real. Splitting his lip open and an all out beat down took place leaving Jamie unconscious and in the hospital. They had to stop production because they weren't sure when Jamie would actually be able to return and film his scenes. When Fox did return to the set, it was with a small crew of friends and his manager. Waiting to greet them was LL Cool J and half of Brooklyn, according to the director, who stated that the tension was only settled after the real life football players that the characters were based on came on set to defuse the situation. Number 7. Ryan Reynolds vs Wesley Snipes Ryan Reynolds is known for many things. He's got his toe dipped into the world of adult beverages, wireless cell phone coverage, and he's even a soccer coach or football for our friends in the UK. One of his most iconic roles as an actor is of course the Merc with the Mouth, Mr. Deadpool himself. However, in 2004, Ryan was a part of a different Marvel movie. As some may know, the original Marvel movie that started this whole live action comic trend was the Blade Trilogy, starring Wesley Snipes as the titular vampire hunter. By the time the third movie of the franchise rolled around, Wesley Snipes was just kinda done with working on set. He hated the way the franchise was turning out, and all of his creative suggestions were quickly shut down. His main problem was the fact that Blade Trinity was written as like a straight up comedy movie when the previous entries were more dark action based movies filled with gore and some pretty stellar fight sequences. So when Van Wilder was cast to be his co-star he kind of gave up. He famously refused to film several scenes unless that he was allowed to wear his shades on set. Apparently he was like micro napping during takes because he just didn't care anymore. Ryan played a big part in his difficulty enjoying the shoot. Apparently he made it his mission to make Wesley snap. He'd constantly do bits, push things too far, and just the general Ryan Reynolds chaos that we're all used to at this point. At the end of the day, Blade Trinity ended up burying the franchise and was one of the most chaotic and toxic films ever made in 2004. So, number 6. Vin Diesel vs The Rock Remember everybody, family. That's it. That's the, that's my intro. Dwayne and Vin Diesel met on set of the fifth Fast and Furious movie, Fast Five. 
very creative title. This was Vin Diesel's fifth movie, but it was Dwayne's first, not just in the franchise, but in the acting world in general. At first, everything seemed to be okay with these guys on set. Fast Five made a lot of money, and they asked Dwayne to return for a six and seven. However, something changed in 2016, when in a now deleted post Dwayne called one of his fellow Cast 7 co-stars a candied bum bum. He didn't say bum bum, but I'm not allowed to say that real word on the internet, so I must speak like a toddler. He actually said a word that rhymes with grass. Rumors began to fly that this was more than likely referring to Vin Diesel. Rumors proven only a week after that post was made. Following the premiere of Fate of the Furious, Johnson posted on Instagram thanking all of his fellow cast members by name, but he left Vin out of the equation. It was later confirmed by Fast and Furious co-star Michelle Rodriguez that there was a massive amount of tension on set of the film. There were bros at first, but as the time went on and the franchise evolved, so did their egos. They fought constantly over who should receive the most screen time and who was the real lead of the franchise. You know, toxic masculinity and all that. To keep both actors happy, Johnson was given a spin-off in which he co-starred as the lead alongside Jason Statham, and Vin Diesel was left right where he belongs with his family. I know it's a bad impression, but it's a fun word to say in his voice. Number five, Bill Murray versus Lucy Liu. Does anybody else just get the most hardcore Charlie's Angels flashbacks when they see these two together? Huh? No? Eh? Fair. Sony's first foray into the world of Charlie's Angels was a massive success when it was released, starring Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and Lucy Liu as the titular Angels. The movie was filled with action, a little bit of comedy, and one of the strangest performances ever delivered by Crispin Glover. Seriously, that guy needs help. One interesting addition to the cast was the inclusion of Ghostbusters alumni Bill Murray as the man behind the microphone, Mr. Bosley. Apparently, the set was anything but a comedy after Bill found out a scene had been rewritten without his knowledge. In an interview with the news outlet Deadline, Lucy Liu spoke up about her time on set and the situation surrounding Bill's outburst. Apparently, Bill was away for a family event when a scene needed to be reshot for the movie. But instead of using a stand-in, it was decided that the scene could be filmed without Murray's character being involved. So it went on without him. When he returned to find that the change had been made while he was gone, he was furious and reportedly shouted at half of the crew, including Lucy herself. At first, she wasn't sure why he was aiming his comments at her. She didn't write the scene, she wasn't the director, so she asked if Bill was talking to her specifically, which apparently sent him into a full-blown meltdown. She decided to speak out on Bill's behavior on set, and he was ultimately written out of the sequel. Lucy is proud for speaking her mind despite being a relatively unknown actor at the time, and is very glad that Bill's career seems to have suffered for it, because Lucy was just the first of many celebrities to comment on his behavior. We'll save that for another time. Number 4. Will Smith vs. Janet Hubert Will Smith got his big break in the acting world thanks to his successful time on the hit sitcom Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. The show followed Will as the titular prince, living with his wealthy family in Bel-Air, surrounded by cousins, uncles, and of course, Aunt Viv. In season one, Aunt Viv was played by a woman named Janet Hubert Witten, who, as many know, was recasted after an onset feud with Will Smith, just not a little bit too far. According to Will, Janet viewed him as the antagonist of her life. She had been in the business for years when suddenly this man popped into her life, and she held a tinge of jealousy towards Will as he just walked into town and he got a gig. Well, that's what happens when you're good at your job, Janet. She was trying to convince the producers to give her character more screen time and allow her to breathe on camera, but they said no because it was not the Aunt Viv show. She fought back hard, but it was ultimately decided that she would be asked to sit out for the rest of the series and be replaced by Daphne Maxwell Reed, who is the Aunt Viv that everybody knows and loves. Number three. Tom Hardy versus Shia LaBeouf. Making a return on this list is Mr. Tom Hardy, but this time it's with Shia. This was an onset feud that was innocent from the perspective of the actors, but not the people who were making their movie. In 2012, Shia and Tom starred in a period piece crime drama called Lawless. It was a pretty solid movie featuring stellar performances from both of its leading men. In 2019, on an episode of the popular talk show Hot Ones, Shia addressed the rumors that he had knocked out his on-screen partner Tom during the shoot. According to Shia, the two were closer than people think and acted more like college buddies than enemies. Shia claims that the two would wrestle a lot on set and that it would sometimes distract people from their work. The rumor that he knocked Tom out was actually started by Tom after he fell down the stairs one night and apparently he was getting ready for his role as Bane in Christopher Nolan's third Batman movie at the time and Shia claims that the main reason he wanted people to think he was in a fight was, again, big tough guy. Their feud may have been innocent between themselves, but to everyone on 
on the outside, Tom Hardy was about to pile drive Shia LaBeouf every five minutes. Number two, Ray Fisher versus Joss Whedon. Ray played a major role in the 2017 DC movie Justice League as Cyborg. Not only was this the first live action iteration of the character for film, but he was also the first black superhero in a leading role in DC. According to Fisher, he was mindful of this and he delivered the best performance that he could and honestly, it was a great performance. There have been way worse actors involved with DC and Cyborg was one of the best parts of the 2017 version. Now, I keep saying that because as some may not know, the original director of the movie, Zack Snyder, was forced to drop out of the shoot midway through production due to a personal tragedy. The studio decided to bring in Avengers director Joss Whedon to finish the project and at first he was just supposed to direct the movie but he ended up rewriting most of the script and reshooting several of the scenes already finished by Zack. This is where the tension started. Joss did not appreciate any outside input on his script and Ray was a very vocal performer who wanted to stick to the original vision that Zack Snyder had. A vision that we actually got to see in 2021 thanks to the Snyder Cut of the film being released. It's two more hours, but it's way better. Ray claimed that Joss was not only dismissive towards his ideas, but that he was an absolute monster to work with. Following the release of the film, Fisher voiced his complaints to DC and Warner Brothers, who opened a brief investigation into the situation, but quickly dismissed the case, claiming that there was insufficient evidence to prove he was telling the truth. Thankfully, several of his co-stars and crew members backed up those claims that Joss was a very angry, racist, and just manipulative boss, creating an extremely toxic environment on set. The backlash from fans, combined with the hashtag Snyder Cut, allowed Warner Brothers to finish Zack's original vision for the project and release a four-hour Snyder Cut in 2021. Not only is Cyborg's storyline much better in this version, but the project overall is considered to be one of the best DC movies ever made. And at number one, James Franco versus Tyrese Gibson. So this feud was brought to my attention by a fellow host here at the studio and I had never actually heard of this movie before today, but but once I found out it was between James Franco and Tyrese, oh, we had to include it on this list. These two start opposite each other in a 2005 dramatic piece called Annopolis. The story follows Franco's character wanting to attend the titular Naval Academy and entering into a boxing tournament against some of the Navy's best and brightest. His main opponent is Tyrese Gibson. Throughout the majority of the filming, James and Tyrese would regularly practice the choreography for the final fight of the film. Now, method acting is one thing, when you just pretend to be someone else all the time and that's it. But it's different when you're literally punching your co-star for real. Instead of the normal film choreography allowing actors to fake hit each other, Franco was throwing real punches without warning. Gibson tried to be civil at first and asked him to lighten up. Franco ignored him and just continued to box his heart out. When asked about the incident in interviews, Franco defended himself by saying that he was aware that he made the set difficult at times and claimed to be so wrapped up in his role that he probably wasn't as friendly as he could be. Gibson, however, holds a massive grudge towards Franco, claiming that he would never step foot in the same room as this man ever again. Good news for Tyrese, James got cancelled and Fast 11's coming soon. And Starting in at number 10, we have Antonio Brown, former NFL wide receiver. Antonio Brown would find himself under fire from fans and other celebrities after he chose to stand by Kanye West after Kanye made some anti-Semitic comments. Antonio, who played in the NFL back in 2021, said he will still remain in his role as president for Donda Sports, which is Kanye's sport agency. With Antonio remaining true to its mission of Donda, he's also channeled his buddy's controversial campaign by saying and supporting Kanye's WLM movement. Kanye has had a lot of criticism over his WLM shirt that he wore during his Yeezy fashion show. Despite the negative reactions, he has still gone on to make headlines for anti-Semitic comments. Overall, the controversy, both Antonio and Kanye have started to become really close friends and they've even started to work on some music with each other. It also seems like Kanye isn't the only one doing some pretty odd things lately as Brown has had his own share of controversy when a video that was released back in October showed himself exposing himself to a woman in Dubai. With Antonio calling Kanye's comments reactionary and selective outrage, he will continue to bring his new ideas, experiences, and design to our world while remaining in support of the humanity Kanye is bringing into the world. Number 9, Kim Kardashian While we all notice the prospect of an epic, especially revolting fashion industry scandal unfolding the response of some of the world's biggest celebrities, caused many of us to be dumbfounded for continuing to support Cedric Charbit and the brand he represents as the CEO 
for Balenciaga just days before America's Thanksgiving holiday, the fashion house of Balenciaga would trigger some major backlash for its 2022 holiday advertising campaign, which toyed with some of the most deprived evils known to man, with the campaign exploiting children. When the photos emerged of little girls holding on to handbags that were shaped like teddy bears, wearing some pretty outrageous gear, and a childlike drawing of a devil, we were all left feeling sick. At the end of the controversy, Balenciaga would try to claim that their plush bear bag should have never featured children in its campaign, and that they had no idea that the advertisement contained these images because they never approved the images. However, knowing that all companies have the final say to anything hitting the media, we all knew this was one giant lie made for the company to try to save their reputation. Kim Kardashian still choosing to stand by Balenciaga, a brand she seems to get all of her leotarded gloved outfits from. After days of being silent, she would say I appreciate Balenciaga's removal of the campaign and apology. In speaking with them, I believe they understand the seriousness of the issue and will take necessary measures for this to never happen again. While Kim has decided that she will be reevaluating her relationship with the brand, many of us have been disgusted at the fact that Kim is being a coward for not immediately cutting ties off with the brand, and we're honestly all disappointed that she is a grown up with her own children who should be protecting other children, but instead she's failing to protect the most innocent and vulnerable by supporting a brand that is always out here showing huge levels of controversy consistently. Hey Peaches, are you enjoying this video so far? If so, don't forget to give this a video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Coming in at number 8, Diddy. When Diddy decided to hop on the newest train in pop culture that revolved around cancel culture, many fans were pretty disappointed in his decision. When Diddy went on to say, as a music family, none of us are saints, none of us are out here without things that happen to them in life. When the 2022 Billboard Music Awards came around, Diddy squarely stood behind Org's decision to invite Travis Scott and Morgan Wallen to perform. While explaining that one of the things he wants to do is cancel the uncancel, as the trend needs to be stopped, he would also go on to say that Travis went through a tragedy and Morgan hurled the N word while talking to his boy. People make mistakes. Now we're moving forward on with love and respect for everybody that was hurt or affected. It's time to forgive. However, some actions are just un forgivable. As Morgan had been cancelled from 7 award shows last year, after the incident rose, his music sales would actually rise during the period. As for Travis Scott on the other hand, he pretty much was sidelined for months after the Astro World tragedy, having 100,000 people present and asking them to search the stage and ignoring an ambulance in the crowd was just disappointing to see and the fact that he is out here supporting it is just heartbreaking. Number 7 Bella Thorne So last year when Army Hammer's fantasies were exposed and some unveiled verified screenshots would show ARMY making some pretty serious claims. When it came to his fantasies, although the topic was trending online, many celebrities choose to remain silent about the situation except for actor Bella Thorne, who took to her Instagram to defend. She would say, I honestly can't believe this. People are crazy to fake this kind of stuff. Poor guy and his kids like leave his family alone. No way he's a freak. Also, there's a million fake screenshots going around. People would certainly begin to criticize Bella's support by saying Bella Thorne is trash. How do some people still not see this? And Bella, Army probably wasn't thinking about the good of his children when he told these girls about his fantasies. With Bella believing that she had more insight and wisdom when it came around to how Army Hammer used his power to push boundaries with other women, the fact that she can sit here and claim that she's an ally to women and survivors, but doesn't let women have the chance chance to share their stories before claiming it as fake DMs caused a lot of people to tell the star that no one actually asked for her opinion. Coming in at number 6, we have Bill Gates. When Bill Gates admitted that he was fundraising meetings that were held with late billionaire GE, he would discuss that the role that his relationship had with Jeffrey played a huge part in his divorce with Melinda Gates. When Bill sat down with Sunday Times, he would say that he didn't realize that by having those meetings, it would be seen as giving Jeffrey credibility. You're almost saying I forgive that type of behavior or something so clearly that the way it's seen that I made a huge mistake not understanding that. With Melinda speaking publicly about her separation from Bill, she would tell CBS that many things ultimately contributed to her decision to end 
the pair's marriage. She would then reveal a bunch of secrets that included that there were whispers for years about Gates' extramarital relationships for people who work for him, and that his behavior was known as an open secret. Bill has always been scheduling off-site meetings that weren't on his calendar with Jeffrey, having multiple employees of Bill and Melinda's foundation visit his mansion and speak to the foundation about a proposed dollar charitable fund after he served jail time. And number five, Sharon Osborne. When Piers Morgan voiced his disbelief in what Meghan Markle had to say about her mental health to Oprah, he would face the raft of thousands of fans. When Sharon Osborne would tweet her support for her longtime friend, this would cause a confrontation with the talk co-host Cheryl Underwood, who would then ask Osborne on air if she was a racist. Shortly after, the two would engage in this huge altercation, and the conflict would start an investigation by CBS, which would force Sharon to apologize. Sharon, in writing, would then say, to anyone of color that I offended, or to anyone that feels confused or or let down by what I said, I'm truly sorry, she wrote in a statement. I panicked, felt blindsided, got defensive, and allowed my fear and horror of being accused of being a racist take over. After her statement in support for Pierce Morgan continued, she would face further claims by her colleagues' remarks, which some she would go on to admit to and some she would deny. Osborne would then join her friend Pierce on talk TV, where the presenters hold nothing back and say what they feel and not following one party at all. And number four, James. Charles. After Charlie D'Amelio uploaded a YouTube video that many people considered offensive as it showed her and her sister Dixie spitting out food in front of a personal chef, many users would deem it inappropriate. James Charles, who was also at the dinner, wouldn't be called out for any inappropriate behavior, surprisingly, like Charlie and Dixie. However, that didn't stop him from speaking his mind about cancel culture and the D'Amelios dropping followers. James would go on to say the Charlie situation is not sitting right with me right now. A hundred million followers in one year and y'all expect her to know how to be a perfect role model? Backlash because she's a picky either and made a joke about milestones. 30 plus year olds dragging someone half their age. Feels familiar. However, I think a lot of people weren't upset about the fact that the girls didn't like the food, but the fact that they were beginning to spit up the food in front of the chef and making hurtful comments about it. The fact James tried to support this toxic behavior is just a little outrageous because even with age, you can't justify someone's poor table manners because we were all taught better to react during these situations at a young age. And number three, boozy. After the baby made some homophobic remarks during his set at the 2021 Rolling Loud Festival in Miami, Boozy would take to his Instagram Live to rant about the displeasure of people canceling the baby over his remarks. Shortly after the baby's performance, even little Naz would make a joke that him and Jack Harlow would be wearing nothing during the VMA's performance while performing Industry Baby for charity. And this also really didn't sit well with Boozy as he would claim, no one should be picking sides over the baby saying some wild things. Boozy definitely wasn't done with his rant, and he would continue on in another video about his outrage over Little Nas's announcement. With several artists, including thousands of fans, speaking out against the baby, it's extremely hurtful remarks that were made. All Boozy did was add more fuel and stigma to the discrimination that surrounds the LGBTQ community. The mistruths that were used by the baby and supported by Boozy had no place in society, and the fact that the musicians used their voice to spread so much hate towards the most marginalized people in our community is just saddening. Boozy's out here saying people shouldn't be taking sides, yet he took sides to spread hate instead of using his voice for good. At number two, Bo Derek. Now the Kardashian family has been slammed for blackfishing for years, especially when it comes to their braids. When Kim Kardashian West was accused of cultural appropriation after crediting actress Bo Derek as the inspiration behind her box braids, she would even go on to credit the braids as Bo Derek braids. Now Bo Derek would come to the star's defense. So Bo Derek, who is now 61, wore her hair like this while she was in the 1979 film 10, which featured the star running down a beach. Bo Derek would take to her Twitter account to say, hey, it's just a hairstyle that I worked on in the movie 10. Kim Kardashian calls it Bo Derek braids because she copied my pattern of braids. I copied it from Anne Margaret's backup singer from her Las Vegas show. And we all copy Queen Nefertari. I hope her royal highness is flattered. While Derek has referred to the Egyptian queen, 
The two came under fire for not recognizing the styles and the history and origins and framing the looks as something new or edgy. Many people have been forced to cut their braids out to play sports or even to attend class, so both celebrities not understanding the hurt braids can cause was the concept of culture vulturing and it was pretty disappointing to see. And at number one today we have Nikita Dragon. When the drama between James Charles and Tati Westbrook erupted online, things would become more complicated after Tati would reveal James was manipulating men that were still emerging into adulthood. Tati would also reveal that James was spreading lies about her and betraying her after she spent years helping him with his brand. After Nikita Dragon showed the screenshots that Sugar Bear agreed to give Charles influencer tickets if he did a promotion, she would force herself into a situation that definitely didn't look good on her image. Especially when James told Tati he was being swarmed by crazy fans to even get those tickets. Over the years, James has become a huge controversial figure and Nikita has consistently defended the star and has stayed by his side in the wake of all his bad behavior with James manipulating younger men. Nikita couldn't even understand the gravity of those topics and she's continued to support James even when more of the situation became to come into light. And at number 10, Oprah. This is one that was incredibly shocking to me because Oprah is one of the most beloved people in the world and other celebrities are constantly singing her praises, sharing how down to earth and nice Oprah is in real life. But it seems that Oprah might act a little differently when the camera cameras are not rolling, or when she's not talking to another celebrity. A waiter that served Oprah for lunch shared their eye-rolling encounter with the TV host. They wrote on Reddit, quote, Oprah didn't tip me on a $200 lunch. Instead, she signed a napkin for me and acted like she was doing me a huge favor. The kicker was when she walked in, they gave away all of my other tables so she didn't have to wait for anything. So I made $4 an hour for two hours for the privilege of serving Oprah. And she went on and on about signing a napkin that I never even asked for. It still makes me so mad when I hear that celebrities do not tip. Like Oprah is a billionaire. She can afford to dip. It's, it's so outrageous. And at number nine, Chevy Chase. This one is less of a shock because it's well known that Chevy Chase is not the greatest guy, although he plays lovable characters on screen. Many of his former SNL castmates have spoken out against him, and he was even banned from the show for his problematic behavior. One Reddit user shared that he is just as awful in real life. They wrote, quote, I saw Chevy Chase at a hotel once as a small nine-year-old, and I love the National Lampoon's Vacation movies. When I asked for his autograph, he verbally went off on me. When my dad came over, he went off on him. He said something messed up, which is that my dad wasn't raising me right. The dude is a straight up jerk. And at number eight, Randy Jackson. Randy Jackson is another star I only ever heard good things about. He was known for being the good guy on American Idol compared to Simon Cowell, who was notoriously savage towards contestants. But this might be another case of a celebrity being completely two-faced, acting nice and friendly while on camera, but being completely different when cameras are not rolling. One Reddit user shared a behind the scenes look at Randy during a children's hospital event. Quote, Randy Jackson was invited to a telethon hosted by a hospital for children with disabilities, where my little sister lived until she passed away. Whenever the cameras were off, he'd hide in his hotel room and seem disgusted with the kids. He didn't want anything to do with them. When the cameras were on though, he was all smiles and hugs. It was so disheartening and disappointing to witness. It was over 10 years ago and I still remember it to this day. And at number seven, Carrie Underwood. This one honestly breaks my heart. This person who has seen a ton of celebrities in their workplace said that Carrie Underwood was by far the worst. They wrote, quote, I worked as a maintenance worker at a concert venue for a few summers and I bumped into several celebrities. But Carrie Underwood is the one who sticks out because of how demanding she always was. She refused to use a toilet if someone else had sat on the seat before her. So we had to buy new toilet seats every time she came. Considering how much we already had to fix, the last thing we wanted to do was pointlessly replace perfectly good toilet seats. In contrast, Reba McIntyre would always eat lunch with the staff and was always super chill. Can you imagine how entitled you have to be to demand like a new toilet basically? I cannot believe the venue agreed to do that for her. And at number six, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry is a famous actor and producer that fans might not know that much about. However, many celebrities have shared just how open hearted and kind that he is. Specifically, when Meghan Markle and Prince Harry were being interviewed by Oprah Winfrey after leaving the royals, they shared that they were on the verge of being homeless with no security. However, Tyler Perry offered them his LA home to live in, along with giving them security until they were able to work it out. What? an amazing guy, right? Well, apparently he doesn't treat normal people as nice. A person who worked to promote Perry's movie, Boo a Medea Halloween in 2016, shared his strange behavior and long list of demands. Apparently Perry flew private to the event with 13 of his staff. They were all forced in the back of the plane while he had the entire front to himself. They added, quote, his team sent our local agency a long list of demands and rules in anticipation of 
his arrival. Tyler wanted to be addressed referred to as Mr. Perry. We were prohibited to speak to him directly, only to his team. Room temperature orange Gatorade had to be in his green room. Furniture wasn't allowed in his press interview suite. All media and press had to travel to him. Mr. Perry would not leave the hotel, and he wouldn't wait for anyone. The person added that his entire team seemed terrified of him. Halfway number five, Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj is a celebrity with mixed reviews. Tons of people say she's down to earth and loves her fans, while others have shared some negative experiences with the star. One person shared their experience working with Minaj on set. Writing quote, I worked with Nicki Minaj before and while on the set with her, I was told not to look her in the face. She also had people move out of the room before she would come in the room. It was a whole ordeal. And at number four, Miles Teller. Miles Teller being on this list should not be a shock to anyone because he is constantly called out for his horrible behavior. Even reporters that have interviewed him have called him entitled and rude. He's even trashed well loved and respected actors like John Cusack. When a reporter told him they are similar actors, Teller replied, quote, I guess we look alike. We did some similar movies. He wasn't traditionally good looking, who was offbeat and quirky but confident. I get it, but I don't want his career. And people who have met him in real life have had similar experiences. They they wrote, quote, I met Miles Teller at a bar. He told my friend to buy him a drink and he still refused to take a picture with him. He ended up smacking my phone out of my hand and I'll never watch a movie with him in it again. And number three, Jim Belushi. One fan shared just how terrible Jim Belushi was to them after they waited hours for an autograph. To make it worse, one of Belushi's co-stars was incredibly nice and made the contrast even worse. They wrote, quote, years ago, us kids waited for Jim Belushi and John Candy after they shot Only the Lonely in Chicago. I asked Belushi for an autograph and he literally called us a bunch of pieces of shit, stupid kids and to get the F out of there. Then came Candy with a big old smile and a cigar hanging out of his mouth. And he spent the next 10 minutes signing autographs and thanking all of his fans. And at number two, Alec Baldwin. Given all the scandals that Alec Baldwin has been in, it's no surprise that he's notoriously rude. He's attacked paparazzi, gotten in physical fights with hecklers, and he's been known to be very arrogant. One Reddit user spoke of their interaction and wrote, quote, One day in the Hamptons, I ran into Alec Baldwin and his wife and their two dogs. I was six, so I wanted to pet their dogs. Mind you, they left their dogs outside of the store, so I didn't know they were theirs. They quickly yanked their dogs away from me and yelled at me. I was six. That just proves the kind of people they are. I mean, who gets mad at a kid for petting a dog that you left outside? And finally, number one, Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons is apparently so awful in real life, multiple Reddit users shared negative experiences with him. One user said, quote, My brother met Gene Simmons backstage at a show he was playing in. Gene complimented my brother highly on his guitar playing, but then said, quote, Too bad you'll never make it, and just walked away. Another person told the story of his dad running into Simmons after one of his Kiss shows. The dad complimented Simmons on the show, and he replied, quote, I hope the next time you're sucking ass to impress someone, you pucker up more, and then walked off. My dad was pissed and told his friends it was time to go, and the bartender stopped them on their way out. Before he left, Gene and his entourage told the bartender that my dad was paying for their drinks. It cost my dad almost $100 to pay for their alcohol. First off, we have Cardi B. Cardi B and Nicki Minaj both appeared on Migos' song Motorsport, and that led to a ton of drama. Cardi said that Minaj changed her verse before the song was even released, to which Minaj responded in an interview that Cardi and husband Offset tried to, quote, make her seem like the bad guy. The ladies seemed to bury the hatchet shortly thereafter at the Met Gala, not to mention Minaj gifted Cardi a $5,000 basket of luxury goodies when her baby culture was born. But then, the rappers got a, into a physical altercation at a New York Fashion Week party in 2018, with TMZ cameras catching Cardi cursing and trying to get through a large crowd of security to Nicki Minaj. Cardi left the party missing a shoe and with a knot on her head, reportedly from a security guard. Cardi B wrote on Instagram shortly after the fight that Minaj had been bad mouthing her and her baby which Nikki later denied on her radio show. I just want people to know that Onika Tanya Miraj, Nicki Minaj, has never, will never speak ill on anyone's child. The other night I was part of something so mortifying and so humiliating to go through in front of a bunch of upper echelon people who have their life together. I was in a Gautier 
gown off the mother effing runway and I could not believe how humiliated we all felt because of Nicki Minaj, Cardi said. Our next celebrity is Miss Taylor Swift. Nicki Minaj took issue with the 2015 MTV Video Music Award nominations for Video of the Year, which she said only celebrated skinny white woman, seeing as her hit Anaconda did not get a nomination. She didn't want to name names, but Taylor Swift, who was riding high on her 1989 success, took it as a dig, tweeting to Minaj, I've done nothing but love and support you. It's unlike you to pit women against each other. Maybe one of the men took your slot. Nikki replied that she never referred to Taylor Swift in her complaint, but suggested that the Bad Blood singer speak out to raise awareness of the issues of racism and sexism against women of color in music. Swift didn't, but the ladies teamed up for a duet at the award ceremony to show their solidarity with one another. That solidarity didn't last long though, because Minaj later recorded a feature on Swish Swish, Katy Perry's attempt at a diss track against Taylor Swift. Considering how long Taylor can hold a grudge, we're guessing Minaj won't be invited to join her infamous squad anytime soon. Especially considering which, which Kendrick Lamar lyric Minaj tweeted after Swift dropped Look What You Made Me Do in August 2017, which fans clearly perceived as a dig against Taylor. Next up we have Iggy Azalea. Nicki Minaj's feud with Iggy likely stemmed from Azalea's 2010 tweet that resurfaced in 2013, which read quote, LMAO at Nicki saying she did the Bet Awards live. Uh, if you say so, girl. Minaj reportedly replied, laughing at laughing at things you can't even do. Study that formula, you cornball. Afterward, Azalea claimed that she was joking. In June 2014 at the Bet Awards, Minaj dissed Azalea, who the New York Daily News reported was rumored to use ghost writers for her rhymes. What I want the world to know about Nicki Minaj is that when you hear Nicki Minaj spit, Nicki Minaj wrote it, she said in her acceptance speech for Best Female Hip Hop Artist. I hope and pray that Bet continues to honor authenticity, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. In August 2014, however, the Hollywood Gossip reported that Azalea and Minaj played nice backstage at the MTV VMAs. Still, by March 2016, Azalea may have reopened the wound on a Watch What Happens Live, saying, I have just as many people on my writing credits as Nikki has on hers. I know I write mine, and if she writes hers, I believe her too. But you can't look at the credits and be like, oh, look at this massive difference. It's the exact same number of people on both. Next up, we have Little Kim, singer rapper Little Kim went by Queen B for decades after getting the name from her late boyfriend Biggie Smalls. But Nicki Minaj appropriated the queen, reportedly infuriating Little Kim, who said in August 2018, I didn't name myself that. When you gotta name yourself, that's a whole different thing. I would never name myself Queen B. Little Kim said on The Breakfast Club in 2012 that Minaj copied her sound, talked smack behind her back, and was quote, very catty. She also described Minaj as a very obnoxious person and claimed Nicki wanted to be the only female rapper in the game at all. The feud still simmered in June 2018 when Little Kim channeled her inner Mariah Carey, telling Entertainment Tonight that she didn't quote know Nicki Minaj while praising Cardi B. Finally, by August 2018, Little Kim was ready to let the beef die, telling 92.3 LA she did what she did until she's ready. Hopefully, God puts it on her mind to do the right to do the right thing because she knows what she did. Miley Cyrus has also had some beef with Miss Nicki Minaj, proving that she is not one to back down. Nicki confronted Cyrus at the 2015 VMA Awards, which Miley Cyrus hosted, after the Wrecking Ball singer called her not too kind while commenting in an interview with the New York Times. Nicki says live Nikki said live into the microphone at the VMA Awards. Now back to this B word that back to this B now back to this B word that had a lot to say about me the other day in the press, Minaj said after taking to the stage to receive the award for best hip hop hip hop video. Miley, what's good? 
Cyrus quickly tried to defend herself, telling Nikki, we all do interviews and we all know how they manipulate. Minaj addressed the still unresolved feud in her cover story for the New York Times Magazine's culture issue that October, saying, you're in videos with black men and you're bringing out black women on your stages, but you don't want to know how black women feel about something that's so important, Minaj said of Cyrus. Years later, Miley released the song Catitude in May 2019, which features the lyric, I love you Nikki, but I listen to Cardi, a clear reference to the Minaj Cardi feud. Nikki responded to Cyrus's diss by saying, A chicken can never talk, a chicken can never talk smack about queens, Minaj said in a response to a question about Cyrus. But I do notice a lot of chickens recently have been trying to say the queen's name for clout, and that has always been happening. The rapper said, that's what Miley did in the first place. And then the white girl cried and made the black girl seem like she was the bad guy. In the first place, she disrespected me in a magazine article for no reason. Next up, we have Mariah Carey. Mariah and Nicki first worked together when Minaj appeared on Carey's 2009 song Up Out My Face in 2009, but the camaraderie would not last long. During her stint as a judge on American Idol in 2013, Nicki warred with fellow panelist Carey a lot. An Idol source told People that Mariah didn't think Minaj could sing and quote, doesn't think she should be judging folks. Mariah has been saying little things to jab at Nikki from day one of shooting, the source said. Although other insiders said Carrie did not provoke Minaj, a profanity-laced outburst caught on video by TMZ suggested that Minaj was fed up and super, super angry. The once cordial stars who never patched things up publicly announced their departures from, my, from American Idol on the exact same day in 2013. Our next celebrity on the list is Megan the Stallion. This is a recent, recent update. Date, Nikki and Megan have had beef throughout the years, but Nikki just dropped a new song that shades Megan to the extreme. Wait, the opposite. But was <laughs> oh no, that's good. The most recent chapter of Megan and Minaj's difficult relationship began when Megan released her latest single, Hiss, on Friday, January 26th of this year. The track begins with Megan's declaration that she wants to quote, get this off my chest and lay it to rest before later rapping the line. These girls be mad at Megan. These girls be mad at Megan's law. I don't really know what the problem is, but I guarantee y'all don't want me to start. Megan's law refers to the U.S. federal law that enforces that information regarding registered offenders is available to the public. For some, this line is a remark aimed at Nikki's husband, Kenneth Petty, who is a criminal and a registered offender. After pleading guilty, mere hours after the release of Hiss, Minaj launched launched into a tirade on social media and previewed her song Bigfoot, a diss track to Megan. The song, the song was released in full today, this Monday, with notable lyrics such as, bad girl, she likes six foot, I call her Bigfoot. The girl fell off, I said, get up on your good foot. As well as likely referring to Megan's height, five foot 10, and the fact that she was shot in the foot by Tory Lanez, Minaj also repeats the line, lying on your dead mama. Megan's mother, Holly Thomas, died in March 2019 of a brain tumor. Wow, Nikki, a bit too far this time. Next up, we have Miss Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato sent a jab to the rapper's way after Minaj failed to mention her in an Instagram photo from the 2016 Met Gala. When you aren't mentioned, quote, when you aren't mentioned in a post but didn't do anything to the person, Lovato wrote on a Snapchat photo, according to E. Both Lovato and Minaj were dressed in Machino by Jeremy Scott for the event. Lovato took to Instagram, uploading a since deleted photo of Nikki seemingly sending her a very sharp, angry look on the red carpet. This pretty much summed up my first and probably last Met Gala, Lovato captured, captioned the picture. Lovato captioned the picture. I'm I'm obviously laughing at the fact that one, I look incredibly awkward, and two, that the shade being thrown in this picture actually gives me life. 
Nikki didn't comment on Lovato's statements. Our next and final celebrity is Kanye West. Once upon a time, Nikki and Nikki asked Kanye if she could collab with him on a project for his Yeezy line. In an interview, Minaj, who's 30 not, I don't need to say that. In an interview, Nikki said she told Kanye, Nikki said she told Kanye West, hey look, I'm about to do something and I just wanted to make sure I spoke to you first, alluding to wanting to work with Yeezy, but the idea didn't exactly go down as planned. According to Nikki, Kanye said he was like, well, if I did something with you, I think my wife, Kim K, probably wouldn't love that idea because I should be giving that to my wife instead. If I was doing a female version of the Yeezys or whatever, it should probably go directly to my wife first. The fashion line conversation, which took place before Kanye and Kim Kardashian split, left Nicki Minaj wondering why someone was, quote, very vocal about the fashion industry not letting him in at one time, would deny another black music star the same chance. First off, we have Shake It Off, and it involved a lawsuit. The lawsuit was filed by Sean Hall and Nathan Butler, the songwriters behind Playa's Gonna Play, a 2000 song by the R&B group 3LW that contains the lines, Playa's they gonna play, and haters they gonna hate. They accused Swift of using those lines without permission or credit on Shake It Off, which was released in 2014 and became one of Swift's defining hits, notching four weeks at number one on the Billboard singles chart. The lawsuit was eventually dismissed and Taylor stated, I have never heard the song Play Is Gonna Play and have never heard of that song or the group 3LW, she said in the court filing. Getaway Car is another song that people are accusing Swift of stealing and it involves another famous song. Celebrity, Hillary Duff. Hillary Duff, uh, Hillary, known for her, sorry, Hillary, known for her hit Disney Channel show, Lizzie McGuire, also had a successful music career after her departure from Disney Channel, and she has been going viral on the internet lately for her iconic performances on talk shows, but that's besides the point. Hillary put out a single called Breathe In, Breathe Out, and the song includes lyrics such as, X marks the spot where we fall in love. Sound familiar? Taylor Swift's getaway car has almost identical lyrics. X marks the spot where we fell apart. Fans were quick to notice the similarities and express their disappointment with the singer. One user saying on Twitter, don't get me wrong, I love Taylor, but the second I heard that, I immediately thought of Hillary. Honestly, a bit disappointed. Another user wrote, really Taylor? You're gonna rip off Hillary Duff's breathe in, breathe out on getaway car and think we won't notice? X marks the spot where we fell apart? Okay, hashtag reputation. Our next song on the list is Wildest Dreams. Taylor has drawn Taylor has drawn quite a few criticisms for biting Lana Del Rey's style in a few ways. Most notably, listeners cite how much the choruses for Swift's Wildest Dreams and Lana Del Rey's Without You sound alike to the point that there are some pretty great mashups on YouTube. The Taylor Swift song also shares elements of the song Young and Beautiful by Miss Lana Del Rey. Are the superstars in a feud because of it? No, actually, both Lana and Taylor seem to be quite friendly, most recently collaborating on a song called Snow on the Beach. Fans loved the song, but one thing was quite troubling. Lana was nowhere to be heard. Lana was apparently featured on the song, but fans Fans couldn't hear her singing at all. Do their voices just blend perfectly, or did Taylor purposely remove Lana from the song as a way of getting back for all the wildest dreams drama? I guess we'll never know. Taylor has been accused for more than just stealing songs. Kanye West has accused her of stealing his merch designs. The Kanye West and Taylor Swift feud is well documented, but Yeezy stands couldn't help notice a couple aesthetic choices Taylor made in her reputation era were reminiscent of the rapper's Life of Pablo style. First, First, they noticed the font used on her tour promotional materials was really similar to one on several pieces of merch Kanye was selling in his pop-up stores. Then she showed up wearing a Marc Jacobs embellished camouflage jacket that also gave people Kanye vibes. This just adds to all the Taylor versus Kanye drama, and if you don't remember how that feud began, let me quickly remind you. The moment that started it all, when Taylor Swift was awarded an award for best female video for You Belong With Me 
in 2009, Kanye climbed the stairs at the award show to interrupt Taylor's acceptance speech with the now infamous pro proclamation, Yo Taylor, I'm really happy for you, I'ma let you finish, but Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. Shortly after, a stunned Swift told reporters, I was standing on stage and I was really excited because I just won the award. Then I was really excited because Kanye West was on stage and then I wasn't excited anymore after that. Along with Taylor's album, Lover, she released a Lover poetry book. Well, another author tried to sue Taylor for insane similarities. The lawsuit claimed that Swift had borrowed a number of visual elements from the author, including pastel pinks and blues and an image of the author photographed in a downward pose. She also claimed that she also claimed a copyright to the book's overall format, including a recollection of past years mem memor memorialized in a combination of written and pictorial components and an interspersed photo Photographs and writings. Just one problem. In their response in February, Swift's lawyers said those elements were nothing more than commonplace features of almost any book, meaning they fall well short of being unique to qualify for copyright protection. Beyonce also had some trouble with Taylor after her 2019 Billboard Music Awards performance. Taylor Swift opened up her live performance of the song Me with a drum line that had a lot of viewers at home wondering if they were about to see a surprise Beyonce performance, but instead, Taylor Swift came out and struck a pose. To say it was reminiscent of Beyonce's homecoming is an understatement, and Twitter users were quick to share their opinions. How come nobody on Taylor Swift's team told her that completely and very poorly ripping off Beyonce was not a good look, one user wrote. Another user said, Taylor Swift really stole Beyonce's set like that? But get this, Taylor Swift's director for the Bad Blood music video is now accusing Beyonce of stealing ideas for her Formation music video. The director says they tried to say she's wearing a black crop top and Beyonce wore a black crop top, but they don't realize in 2015 in Bad Blood, Taylor Swift was wearing a black crop top already. I really do think, by the way, that Beyonce copied bad blood. He says. Now, this next story was highly, highly publicized and has Taylor Swift as the victim of stealing. She's the victim this time. On June, um, I'm gonna do that one more time. Now, this next story was highly publicized and now has Taylor Swift as the victim. On June 30th, 2019, the American singer songwriter came in dispute with her former record label, Big Machine Records, and its new owner, Scooter Braun, over the ownership of the masters of her first six studio albums. It was a highly publicized dispute, drawing widespread media coverage and led Swift to release the re-recorded albums Fearless, Red, Speak Now in 1989 from 2021 through 2023 to gain complete ownership of her music. Scooter Braun had become the owner of all of the masters music videos and artworks, including those of Swift's first six studio albums. In response, Swift stated that she had tried to purchase the masters but Big Machine Records had offered unfavorable conditions and she knew the label would sell them to somebody else instead. Scooter Braun purchased Big Machine Records in 2019 and became the owner of the masters of Swift's first six albums, which he later sold to Shamrock Holdings in 2020. Consequently, Big Machine Records and Taylor Swift were embroiled in a series of disagreements leading to further friction. Swift alleged that the label blocked her from using her music for the 20. American Music Awards and her documentary on Netflix, Miss Americana. Swift announced that she would re-record the six albums and own the new masters herself. Swift continued to express her disapproval about Scooter Braun and again rejected another offer made by Shamrock Holdings. Next, one of Taylor's first cases of stealing goes all the way back to her 2008 hit, You Belong With Me. Taylor was accused of stealing lyrics and concepts from a band called Saving Jane and their song titled Girl Next Door. Taylor most likely cop Taylor most likely copied and reformatted the concept of Girl Next Door itself, giving it a more upbeat, energetic pop sound to counter the grittier pop rock vibe of the original song. The concepts of both music videos are also eerily similar, all the way down to the ongoing feud between the evil popular brunette.
brunette and the geeky down to earth girl with glasses. The most obvious lift though is the lyrical similarities from the chorus Girl Next Door and the pre chorus of You Belong With Me. Here's the Girl Next Door lyrics She's the prom queen, I'm in the marching band, she's a cheerleader, I'm sitting in the stands. Now, here's Taylor's lyrics But she wears short skirts, I wear t shirts, she's cheer captain, and I'm on the bleachers. Wow, Taylor. Really? Next, Taylor Swift was accused of stealing lyrics from singer songwriter Matt Nathanson. Possibly Taylor Swift's most critically acclaimed song, All Too Well, has sadly also been accused of lyrical plagiarism, lifting a lyric more or less verbatim. And I forget about you long enough to forget why I need to. That is Matt Nathanson's lyric, and this is Taylor's lyric. And I forget about you long enough to forget why I needed to. Wow, eerily eerily similar. According to Spin magazine in 2012, Nathanson wrote in a since deleted tweet, she's definitely a fan and now she's a thief. Last but not least, let's chat about the Olivia Rodrigo Taylor Swift feud. Although this story doesn't necessarily involve stealing, Rodrigo is known to take heavy inspiration from Swift's writing techniques. Olivia and Taylor were very friendly after the release of her breakout hit Driver's License, but after Taylor Swift invited Sabrina Carpenter to open for her on the Eras tour, Olivia was apparently very offended. If you don't know, her song Driver's License is reportedly about Olivia's ex. Joshua Bassett cheating on her with Sabrina Carpenter. Months after Taylor dropped the Sabrina Carpenter news, Olivia released the song Vampire with lyrics like, I used to think I was smart, but you've made me look so naive. And fans are convinced the song is referring to ex best friend Taylor Swift. Number 10, Chloe Grace Moretz. Chloe got into it with Kim when she posted a birthday pic mirror selfie in 2016. Like most things Kim Kardashian does, the internet went crazy with supporters and protesters. Even a ton of celebrities felt the need to chime in and tell Kim how they were feeling. Chloe posted to Twitter telling Kim that she truly hopes she realizes how important setting goals are for young women, teaching them that women have more to offer than just their bodies. Not one to let anything go, Kim responded saying, let's all welcome Moretz to Twitter since no one knows who she is. Shade. Chloe responded a few months later during an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, revealing that she had regrets about giving Kim Kardashian attention, but not for the comments she made. She said she realized that being the most opinionated and loud person in the room is not always the most impactful. This tweet haunted her for years. In 2018, the Kardashians sent her perfume as a gift to her A-list haters. According to Chloe, she didn't even get the perfume. Her publicist took it instead. After a few years of being asked about one comment, Chloe had to put her foot down and ask people to stop asking her about it because it's an old and pointless story. Number nine, Taylor Swift. The Taylor Kim feud has lasted a long time and is extensive. While some may think that the only thing tying these people together is the 2009 VMAs, which is fair, that's far from the case. The 2009 VMA moment where Kanye interrupted Taylor Swift as she was accepting her award for best female artist, took the microphone from her hand and claimed that Taylor was great, but that Beyonce had the best video of all time. At the time, this wasn't a massive deal, but behind the scenes, there was some shady stuff going on. When Kanye and Kim were still together, they were a toxic combination. So toxic that they thought it'd be a great idea to write a song where they literally call Taylor a word that rhymes with snitch and use her name. Later on in 2016, Kanye claimed that he was given permission to use the lyrics and was backed up by his wife Kim after she posted a clip from a phone call that took place between themselves and Taylor. Now, after the internet saw this, it was irrefutable evidence that Taylor Swift was lying and the online feud quickly dissolved. However, in 2020, the unedited version of that phone call was released and Wes did not ask Taylor Swift about the lyrics at all and Taylor was forced to respond on her Instagram by saying simply that she was telling the truth. At the time they wrote the lyrics and made the phone call, the bit about Taylor being a snitch hadn't even been written yet. Thankfully for Kim, she split from Kanye, but the phone call just proved that Kim is a liar and only wants to be famous no matter what it takes. Number 8. Naomi Campbell Kim Kardashian has rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, from restaurant employees to her staff and supermodels. In 2014, Naomi Campbell appeared on the morning show where she was also asked about her thoughts on Kanye West and Kardashian's Vogue cover. Campbell seemed very hesitant to give an honest answer, doing her best to skirt around the issue while still giving enough information to viewers for them to realize that she was definitely throwing some shade at Kim, literally saying that she did not want to comment. When pressed about the answer, Campbell explained 
explained that she is a fashion model and she's been working for 28 years. And when you get a Vogue cover, it is a build in your career. It's a stepping stone to achievement, she said, suggesting that Kim did deserve the cover and had literally no further comments to make. Considering what she could have said, Campbell handled the situation pretty well and with a ton of respect. But bloggers attempted to add fuel to the fire in April 2019 when they started accusing Kardashian of stealing Campbell's most notorious red carpet looks. Kim set the record straight, saying that in this case, imitation was the sincerest form of flattery. According to Kim, herself and Naomi had talked about this before any clothes were worn, and the pair also created a short film with Cher in 2020. So either they patched things up or they kept it together for Cher, which I would do as well. Number seven, Bette Midler. Kim's birthday suit mirror selfie caught the attention of a lot of celebrities. One who chimed in just completely out of left field was Bette Midler. Bette is an incredible woman, well known for her music career. She is also a fantastic actor who is probably most universally known as Winifred Sanderson from the film Hocus Pocus. Bette posted on Twitter weighing in on her feelings about Kim, saying that Kim Kardashian tweeted a birthday suit selfie and if Kim wants us to see a part of her that we have not seen yet, she's gonna have to swallow a camera. That is legendary. What a great roast. Please get this woman on the dais of the next Comedy Central celebrity roast as soon as possible. Kardashian commented back with a joke of her own, asking Midler to send birthday pics of her own, even though it was past her bedtime. Get it? Cause she's old? <laughs> Ending the comment with the hashtag, just kidding. However, a few minutes later, she posted another more sinister comment saying, Bet Midler, I really didn't want to bring up how you sent me a gift a while back trying to be a fake friend and then come at me. Kim's terrible, eh? But she did not have the last laugh. Bet responded to the comment telling Kim that she has never tried to be a fake friend. Looks like anyone can take a selfie, but not everyone can take a joke. Which is very true. How are you going to write the first joke about her being old and then before she even responds to that joke, you comment again saying like, you know what? I wasn't gonna bring this up, but why not? That's a terrible way to start a conversation and a terrible thing to do. Number six, Pink. A lot of celebrities seem to be upset and annoyed when Kim Kardashian posted that birthday suit selfie, and one of those powerhouse musicians was Pink. She took to Twitter to comment on Kim and her photos, shading her selfie and tweeting a photo of a note that she wrote pertaining to women. She wrote, shout out to all of the women across the world using their brains, their strength, their work ethic, their talent, their magic that they were born with that only they possess, and continued that it may not ever bring you as much attention or banknotes as using your body your orientation, your identity, but women like you don't need that kind of attention. Pink does not hide her feelings, so when she came onto a show called Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, a fan asked her if her post was in fact in reference to Kim Kardashian, and Pink did not hesitate and said yes. Kim had apparently gone in on Bette Midler, and according to Pink, if you mess with Bette, you'll be hearing from the Pink. Number five, Miley Cyrus. Miley is no stranger to a raunchy post or two, but when Kim Kardashian posted those you know, birthday selfie pics that everyone seems to be upset about, it didn't go over well with Miley either. Her issue was not with the photo itself, but instead of the amount of attention that the photo had received. Miley was even prompted to create her own Instagram post addressing the issue. The pics from Kim became such a phenomenon that Miley just couldn't ignore it, in her words. Taking to Instagram, Miley posted a Kim emoji of Kim Kardashian's famous booty, clearly trying to let everyone know who she was talking about without actually posting any pictures of Kim Kardashian. She also included a caption addressing the feud, calling those involved Tacky. Instead of asking the world to just straight up stop celebrating Kim, she attempted to shift the focus to celebrating women in general, posting to her Instagram asking women to celebrate each other, writing, why don't we overly fortunate women come together and try to create and bring jobs to other women in desperate need of them, so that they can support not only themselves, but their families as well. Kim never responded to that post or showed any support of any kind for Miley, and eventually the world moved on to something else, but the message Cyrus was trying to share is one worth noting. Number four, Sharon Osbourne. Sharon is no stranger to controversy herself, being fired from her views on the talk, but that did not stop her from being one of the celebrities that vocally trashed Kim's mirror pics. Sharon even went so far as to recreate the photo herself in support of Kim, writing hashtag liberated. However, while the photo is still up, she seemed to go back on her statement in 2017 when she berated Kim for the revealing photo. She wrote that Kim says she is doing everything in the name of feminism, but that this was not that. 
She said in reference to the Kardashian women as a whole that these women live off their bodies, half of LA has been through them, and everything they do from the tapes to the plastic see-through dresses and gym wear are all about S-E-X and not female progress. Kardashian responded to the post saying that she never exclusively said that anything was in the name of feminism. Instead, she said she posts body barring pics because she said, I like how I look and I feel proud when I've lost all the baby weight. And she posts it because she feels like posting it and feels powerful. Those are her words. Number three, Beyonce. Considering Beyonce and Kim run in similar circles thanks to their Hollywood connections, their former rap husbands who were friends and entrepreneurial backgrounds, you would think that these people get along, but apparently that is very far from the case. Rumors about Kardashian and Beyonce's feud started in 2014 when Jay-Z and Beyonce didn't show up to Kim and Kanye's wedding. Fans being the way that they are started launching rumors left and right, flooding the internet with possibilities. Two of the big ones were A, that they were too busy, which is fair, and the second being that Rachel Roy, who Jay-Z is rumored to have cheated with, was going to be there. In October 2016, the rumors escalated after a source told The Mirror that Beyonce has genuinely never liked Kim Kardashian. She's apparently tolerated her because of their husband's friendship and mutual friends. Beyonce also can't stand the whole reality TV shtick, which is fair, it's an annoying show. Of course, with it now being 2023 and Kim being long divorced from Kanye, there's a small chance that they've patched things up, but why would they? Beyonce's a superstar in her own right, and now that her hubby isn't connected to Kim, she just can ignore her while Kim continues to do her thing. Number two, Pierce Morgan. Pierce wrote an open letter to Kim in 2016 in the wake of her awful Paris robbery when five men tied her up and robbed her. While he wrote that he initially liked her after interviewing her in 2011, his feelings towards her had been skewed. In the letter, he wrote something about how Kim had changed since the moment he first met her. She grew slowly coarser, according to Pierce, and snarkier, and started bombarding the world with regular X-rated selfies. By 2018, his tirade continued, claiming on Good Morning Britain that time should be up for Miss Kardashian after she posted a topless photo on Instagram. Unsurprisingly, Morgan happened to later be a recipient of Kardashian's Valentine's Day gifts, the only man on that list. The gift only fueled his hatred and criticism, and in September of 2019, he continued his hate when he mocked Kardashian's Emmy presentation with her sister Kendall, where the entire audience openly laughed at the two starlets. Morgan said that, compared to the genuinely talented people on stage that night, those sisters looked like idiots. And at number one, Amber Portwood. One of Kim's earliest feuds dates back to 2011 when she upset a ton of young moms from the TV show Teen Mom. Kim wrote a negative post on her blog about teen pregnancy rates, blaming Teen Mom for making the situation seem cool in the eyes of young women. Clearly she's never seen an episode of that show. There's nothing cool about it. In fact, it's pretty depressing. One of those kids, as she put it, didn't let Kim talk down to them without consequences. Amber posted on Twitter saying that the last time she checked, Kim had an X-rated movie floating around the internet that she made a lot of money off of. She did that, but she wants to bash the girls in Teen Mom. When her sister Kylie got pregnant, she seemed much more supportive of the situation, so it's okay to have a baby when you're young, so long as you're related to Kim Kardashian. May that be a lesson to all of you. At number 10, we have how she felt about Desperate Housewives. While she enjoyed working on the set and had a great time with the cast and crew, it dominated her career, and she wanted to be known for something other than Desperate Housewives. In a nutshell, the show was about how one of the housewives who passed saw her friends, saw the world, and saw her personal experiences. But over the span of the 15 years the show took place, they gradually learn about the dark and hidden things about the other women, and what they are hiding behind their white picket fences. The show had eight seasons in total, and won many awards and accolades, and Felicity even won an award for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series. So why would she want to break away from all that? Well, after the success of the show, she had a hard time landing roles that matched the success of the show. She has many IMDb credits, but all of them were either small roles or not blockbuster hits, which had to have put a dent in her confidence. This brings us to the next point. At number 9, we have how she's overshadowed by her husband. She dated and is now married to William H. Macy, and they have two daughters together. But with his decades of success, his most notable role being in Shameless, it's safe to say that people would recognize him first if they're out in public together. 15 years is a long time to be with someone, especially when it comes to Hollywood. He even helped her land some of the roles in some of the movies he was in as well, 
which led them to both earn their stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2012. It's good for them that they can actively work together, and it's important to be supportive of one another. But there is a definite success gap between the two of them, married or not. It could be the fact that Felicity was just never cut out for bigger roles, but as long as she is happy with where her career has gotten her, that's what counts. At number eight, we have how she's a Nepo baby. Now, it wasn't that she was born into a famous family, but she was born into a wealthy family, with her presumed father being a partner at Morgan Stanley. One of her grandfathers was the founder of the Peter Cartridge Company, a Baptist minister and an author, and her great-grandfather was a St. Louis businessman. Because of the family wealth, she attended a private school along with her six other siblings, and attended a New York University and an art school in London. This is what led her to have a stage career before reaching the big screen, but we'll get more into that later. While she hasn't directly been labeled a Nepo baby, she insists her success came from her auditions and her natural acting talent, rather than the fact that her parents paid for her to have such a prestigious acting education. At number seven, we have how she started as a stage performer. As I mentioned before, she did study acting and began acting in theater, as a lot of actors do. She's acted in 17 different stage productions, with most of them actually being in New York. She also continued to star in stage productions up until 2015, while taking breaks in between to star on screen. She hasn't said anything about her progression from theater to television, so we don't have a good inside look at how she managed the transition or how she handled it. But with her having numerous lead roles, it's safe to say that her stage acting paid off enough for her to become a television actor, even if they were only small roles in small movies. At number six, we have her trying to be a parent. It's not easy to be a parent, and it makes it even harder when both you and your husband are regularly working individuals whose entire livelihood is based on landing roles. In the year 2000, she had her first daughter, and in 2002, they welcomed their second daughter. However, when Sophia, her eldest, was born, she felt like she wasn't fit for motherhood, and that she just kept making mistake after mistake while being sleep deprived. She starred in Door to Door in 2002, and has been acting regularly since then, starring in Christmas with the Cranks, Transmerica, Raising Helen, and Phoebe's Wonderland, to name some of the bigger ones. This couldn't have been easy with two young daughters at home. While acting seems to run in the family, considering one of her daughters is currently in school for acting, but it wasn't always sunshine. This brings me to the next point. At number five, we have how she didn't want to be a bad mother. No parent wants to hear that they failed or that they didn't do enough, or their actions caused their child to grow up the way they did. So because of this, both Felicity and William tried to raise their girls out of the media's eye, which is what we know is probably for the best, considering some children of famous people who grow up being famous are a little out of touch with reality. William said in an interview that when Felicity found out she was pregnant, she tried to gain all the knowledge she could about parenting through books, and would read stacks of different parenting books in order to do her best as a mother. Their oldest daughter, Sophia, wanted to follow in her parents' footsteps, and is becoming an actress herself, but not without a hand lent by her mother which I'll get into later. Both Felicity and William are super supportive of her and say that she's a talented actress. So we hope that success will come her way when she graduates from college, even if her entry was paved smoother than others. At number four, we have how she didn't win an award for American Crime. For some background knowledge, American Crime is a crime drama TV show that had three seasons, with Felicity being one of the lead roles in all three seasons. The main cast play a different role each season, but are ultimately all connected together, centered around the crime of the season. Well, the show was a hit, with the first two seasons scoring 95% Rotten Tomatoes, and the third season scoring a whopping 100%. The first season was nominated for 27 awards, the second season was nominated for 11 awards, and the third season was nominated for two awards. She alone was nominated for eight of those awards, but she didn't win a solo award, and the entire main cast won a Satellite Award for being the best television ensemble cast. So you can bet she was a little upset at the fact that she was constantly nominated, but never quite good enough to win. At number three, 
we have Transmerica. The movie received well with critics, but was a lot to take in for some fans. It's got a very long and complicated plotline that makes no sense in some places. And one of the places that left some fans disappointed was that Felicity played a trans female character. It was also widely disregarded because it was released in 2005 and people weren't nearly as open to the movie concept as they would be now. But people thought that Felicity's character should have been played by an actual trans woman who would have had a more genuine understanding of the character and what the character goes through throughout the movie. The movie was originally created for a film festival, so it never saw theaters, and it was rated a 6.8 out of 10, according to 145 people. However, she did win a Golden Globe for her performance, and critics thought it was a great movie, considering it won 12 awards at a few different awards ceremonies. But with how fast the world changes and how quickly Hollywood's gaze changes, it's still overlooked. At number two, we have how she is practically invisible in today's world. While she had a steady career, her name is only known because of the scandal she participated in a few years ago. Even if she won a handful of awards, she was never in anything monumental enough to be acknowledged by the modern world or to be remembered as an important character of film history. While being married to a famous actor as well helps with her relevance, it's not working as well as some may think. She has gone back to stage acting, which isn't nearly widely appreciated is acting on screen, so she's going backward rather than forward in her career. But at least she's still trying, right? This proves that even if your star is on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, you aren't always relevant to Hollywood. And last but not least at number one, we have the Varsity Blues scandal. The point most of you have been waiting for since she just came forward and talked about it for the first time since it happened. And there have been a lot of different reactions. The Sparks Note version of what happened is her daughter Sophia, the one I mentioned before who's in school for acting. Well, well, her practice SAT scores were subpar, so Felicity paid someone $15,000 to improve her score enough for her to be accepted into the college she's still attending. Felicity claimed she had no choice but to break the law for her daughter to pursue her dream, and she wasn't the only one who was caught during the scandal. Rich parents have been doing it for years, but the fact that she claimed she saw no other option for her daughter if she didn't, and how she wanted her to have a chance at a future, as if she couldn't study harder or work harder like most American students. She even went as far to say that when the FBI entered her mansion and woke up her and her daughters, she thought it was a joke until she was put in handcuffs. She was in jail for 11 days before being released. This just proves how far famous parents will go to make sure their child comes out on top which we have seen a lot in celebrities. Number 10, Thomas Gibson. Thomas made a name for himself, starring as one of the leads of the series, Criminal Minds. He was on the show for a few years, and in that time, he made a few problems for those unfortunate enough to be staff members of the series. There were some issues over the years that would have warranted some actions, like screaming at producers and writers for not doing a good job, but the incident that got him kicked off the show for good involved, well, a kick. In 2016, Thomas was swiftly fired from the series after an incident with a writer named Virgil Williams. An internal investigation revealed that Thomas kicked Virgil one day during production of an episode that Gibson was directing. As I said, this was not the first incident on set that really should have resulted in some kind of a punishment though. In 2013, he pleaded no contest to No No Juice related reckless driving after being arrested on suspicion of a DUI, and three years before that, he allegedly shoved an assistant director named Ian Wolfe during a late night location scene. That led to the studio ordering Gibson to take eight hours of anger management. According to most people on set, Thomas was a wild card. You know, some days he'd be friendly and accommodating, and then the next day he was ballistic. Number nine, Joaquin Phoenix. We understand a dedication to one's craft, and Joaquin is just a prime example. Joaquin's acting career has been going steady since he first appeared in the 1989 comedy Parenthood when he was in his mid-teens. While he's seen as one of the greatest actors in recent history, his reputation on set was tarnished thanks to a little freak out while filming the 2018 solo flick Joker. He appeared on Jimmy Kimmel Live to promote the film when Jimmy played a behind the scenes clip of Joaquin getting loud and angry at a man named Larry and the constant whispering behind the cameras before dropping an F-bomb and storming off the set. When the cameras came back to the studio, Joaquin was just frozen in shock. He was clearly not expecting that clip to ever see the light of day. He explained that Larry was a cinematographer who was teasing Joaquin off set earlier in the day, calling him a diva and referring to him as Cher. In fact, during his on-set outburst, you can hear him say, calling me Cher. How is that an insult? 
He then explained that there's a lot of pressure on set, especially in a closed space like the apartment from the scene, and he apologized to the audience for having to see him behave in such a manner, which was met with applause. At the end of the day, he's a performer, and no harm came from this outburst, so if Larry's cool with it, we're cool with it. Number eight, Bill Murray Lake Toss. Bill Murray's gonna be on this list more than once and for good reasons. For this entry, we're talking about the film What About Bob and its extremely toxic set while filming. Bill Murray was really getting on his co-star's nerves, Richard Dreyfuss from Jaws, literally berating and bullying this man between takes to get the best performance out of him. In the years since, he claimed that Richard encouraged him to do this, but Richard claims that that never happened and is a complete lie. Considering the incident that this entry is actually about though, he got off pretty easy. On the same set, Bill got into an altercation with producer Laura Ziskin, a woman who is so respected that she has an achievement award named after her. This woman was subject to Bill's diva behavior and one day during a disagreement, Bill Murray picked her up and just tossed her into a lake. When describing the event, she claims that it was playful, but according to everyone else on the set, it was just the wrong word to use. Number seven, Jenna Ortega. Jenna participated in one of the most popular streaming shows of this year on Netflix, playing Wednesday Adams in Wednesday. The series really helped launch Jenna's already growing career, and of course, the series was picked up for a second season. However, it seems that Jenna may end up writing that entire season herself, because the writers of season one just didn't do a great job according to her. A while back and before the writer's strike, Jenna made comments about having to put her foot down on the set of Wednesday. According to her, the writing was just odd, and honestly, Jenna made so many good points. She felt that the things that Wednesday was doing made no sense. She was involved in a love triangle that was just weird and honestly distracted from all the good parts of the show, and some of the lines that she was supposed to say were cut after she expressed concerns. There was a line of dialogue that saw Wednesday say the words, Oh my god, I love it. Ugh, I can't believe I just said that. To which Jenna said, no. Wednesday is not some valley girl with an emo side. She chops the heads off siblings if they let her. She claims that a ton of writers will agree that she is difficult and unprofessional at times because that was the only way to make her character work. She'd literally change the dialogue during a take and then the writers were just constantly confused. Ortega has claimed to be very protective of her character and has every intention to make season two better in every way, dropping any love stories surrounding Wednesday and instead opting to dive in deep on the dark and macabre that Tim Burton is really known for. The writers released sarcastic statements claiming that Jenna should really just write the next season herself since she's so good at it. Okay, let her do it. It's probably going to be great. Number six, Justin Bieber. In 2015, Justin was performing on the Today Show, debuting his new song, What Do You Mean? During his performance, he got super excited and started dancing while singing, you know, one normally would. But moments later, he was caught on air dissing the camera operator, saying that he might as well not dance since the cameras don't even move. He said next time he won't dance. It seems like a waste of effort. He was visibly annoyed as he ended his time on the show. Fans of Justin were very quick to question his aggression in the moment. Before he was cut off by a commercial break, Justin starts to rant about what he even does this for and if they're just gonna, well, then, then, and then he was cut off. Not long after this on-air mishap, Justin actually announced that he was gonna take a little break from music. The two seemed to be unrelated, but hey man, you never know. Maybe he had some real regrets when it comes to scolding a camera person that did nothing to you before that. But come on, out of all the mistreatment scandals surrounding Justin Bieber, this one's the silliest. When Justin appeared on the set of CSI, he actually upset an entire crew with his behavior. According to several eyewitness accounts, Justin locked a producer in a closet out of frustration and put his fist through a cake that was on the craft service table. Justin dismissed these claims as baseless rumors, but like a lot of people saw him doing that, so. You be the judge. Number five, Barbara Cochran. Ah, Shark Tank, what a wonderful program. Seeing some up and coming entrepreneurs get their start thanks to the endorsement and partnership of the Sharks. One of the Sharks, Barbara Cochran, was blasted online after a resurfaced clip showed her saying how much she loved to fire people. Firing someone is a difficult conversation, doesn't usually end well for both people involved. However, for Barbara, it's her favorite thing in the entire world. These comments resurfaced as there is a labor shortage across the US, so that didn't help. In an interview on the Diary of a CEO podcast, she revealed that she loves firing people, especially on Fridays. What she loves to do is pop by someone's desk on Wednesday, book an appointment for Friday. Instead of giving them a proper reason for firing, though, she'll actually just tell them that you know she's not really sure why. They just don't really fit with the company. I don't know what makes this woman think it is 
is a fun thing to be fired, but nonetheless, people are fuming. Many fans simply wonder if she owns a Dalmatian coat. More than likely. Number four, Christina Aguilera. There have been a few instances of Christina being a menace to her staff or just people that she's worked with in the past. Today, we're going to focus on her time as a judge on The Voice. According to several sources close to the show, she was a nightmare to work with. Apparently, she always shows up late and just doesn't seem to care or apologize for holding up filming of the show. To make things worse, she is constantly arguing with Adam Levine. As early as 2012, insiders told production on The Voice that they much preferred Adam Levine to Christina. Apparently, the makeup crew of the show acts as a NASCAR pit team. Every time herself and Adam get heated, whether it's on or off camera, she's directed to the makeup team to cool off. They then apply product to her face like she's Ricky Bobby in the middle of a race. According to producers, she made outrageous demands, including the introduction of a foot massager to the staff. Someone's only job on set was to massage Christina's feet every 30 minutes. No thank you. Number three, Bill Murray and Harold Remus. Now, it may come as a shock to you that two of the four members of the legendary Ghostbusters just kind of despised each other, but it turns out that this is very much the case. While filming Bill's more popular film Groundhog Day, it turns out that the star was in a rough place. Place. According to the crew, he tormented Harold, the director of the project, constantly, showing up late, being consistently unavailable, and just being overall really mean. Apparently, the main cause for concern was just Bill's overall feelings about the movie. He took issue with the way it was filmed, some of the dialogue he had to say, and just seemed to disagree with Harold about everything. Despite their collaborations before this on movies like Ghostbusters and Caddyshack, they just did not see eye to eye on anything. Bill wanted this movie to be more serious and philosophical, but Harold had to constantly remind Mind him, it was a comedy. At the end of the day, the constant arguments made a terrible time on set. Number two, Katherine Heigl. Kathy was riding high back in 2007. The former Grey's Anatomy star not only won an Emmy for Best Supporting Actress in a Drama Series, but she also began transitioning to the big screen with the success of her first feature film, Knocked Up, alongside comedy legend Seth Rogen. Now, unfortunately, her rise to the top quickly became a free fall into an active volcano following an ill-fated Vanity Fair interview the following January. In the interview, Catherine made a move that still has people scratching their heads to this day. She openly bashed the film that made her famous, claiming that it painted women as shrew, humorless, and uptight, while also placing blame on Seth Rogen for writing the men as lovable, goofy, and fun. The film still sits at an impressive 89% on Rotten Tomatoes because, now while she might claim the project was problematic, the final product is just a fun love story filled with good jokes and performances and a good story. Seth felt betrayed by the comments as they never had a fight on set and it never seemed like she was uncomfortable at any point. These comments, combined with some negativity towards her Grey's Anatomy writers, caused her agents to drop her as a client and her time in Hollywood quickly came to a screeching halt. And at number one, Bill Murray and Lucy Liu. Sony's first foray into the world of Charlie's Angels was massively successful thanks to its stars, Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and of course, Lucy Liu as the titular Angels. This movie was filled with action, comedy, and one of the weirdest performances ever given by Crispin Glover. That dude needs help. One interesting addition to the cast, though, was the inclusion of Bill Murray as the main man behind the mic. Bosley. Now, apparently the set was anything but a comedy, though, after Bill found out his scene was rewritten while he was away. In an interview with the news outlet Deadline, Lucy Liu spoke up about her time on set and Bill Murray's outburst. Apparently, Bill was away for a family event when a scene needed to be refilmed, and instead of using a stand-in, they just decided that it could go on without Murray's character being involved. So, the scene was filmed, and that was that. When he returned to find that the changes were made while he was gone, he was furious. He reportedly shouted at half of the crew, including Lucy herself. At the time, she wasn't sure why he was aiming his comments at her. She didn't write the scene. She wasn't the director. And she asked Bill if he was talking to her, and apparently that sent him into a meltdown. She decided to speak out on Bill's behavior, and he was ultimately written out of the sequel. Lucy's pretty proud for speaking her mind, despite being a relatively unknown actor at the time. And so far, it looks like Bill's career has suffered from it, because Lucy was just the first of many celebrities to comment on his behavior, but we could do a whole top 10 list about Bill Murray. Number 10. Tragedy. One of the more truly tragic revelations since the book's release is the fact that Megan suffered a loss very late in her journey as a mom. Within the final pages of the poetry book, Megan describes the heartbreaking pregnancy loss that she suffered with her fiance Colson Baker, better known as MGK. Megan told Kana Whitworth from ABC News that she had never been through anything like that before in her life. She has three kids already, so it was very difficult for both of them and it sent them on a very wild journey together and separately and together and 
and apart, trying to navigate what everything means and why it happened. Megan has made it clear since day one that this is not some expose memoir that you're going to sit down and read for 20 hours on end. This is a collection of truth told through her words. A story that needed to be shared or it was going to make her sick. She's dealt with physical violence from exes, manipulation, tragedy, all these things that she's had to deal with alone or behind closed doors. While she never names any names in her book, we still feel our hearts ache and wrench when she reads a single sentence. Number 9. Addicted to Boys The title of Megan's book of poems is called Pretty Boys Are Poisonous and is filled with multiple excerpts regarding her past relationships. One thing that she's spoken about briefly in interviews about this book is the fact that she was addicted to boys and had a history of getting together with her co-stars. She told Drew Barrymore on The Drew Barrymore Show that when she was young, she was really rebellious and wild, always running away to fall in love with a new flame, aka every single co-star. She added that at the time, she felt herself to be a free spirit and was just addicted to the idea of falling in love. She went on to tell Drew that it was actually her kids, Noah, Bodie, and Journey, that changed her whole mindset on relationships and love. She shares her three sons with her ex, Brian Austin Green, and she claims that something happened when she had her first child. She realized she didn't want to repeat the pattern of her own parents with her kids. Despite being a solid mom, she did admit that she's been a little bad in the past, admitting that she painted a Friedrich Nietzsche quote on an ex's wall in a ton of paint just so they had to redo their room, poking fun at herself by saying anyone who dated her should write a poetry book as she was not a peach. Number 8. Oxy and Takiki. There is a poem in this book that shares a similar name to this entry, kind of, I'm not allowed to say the real thing on the internet. And restrictions. Megan revealed on Good Morning America that she has been in several physical and mentally damaging relationships. I know that's not even close to the right word to use, but again, can't say the real one. She explained that she was involved with a very famous dude, but that nobody knew that she was dating him. This unnamed celebrity is one of the men described as an evil ex in this book. In her poem, she describes a dark moment with this unnamed man, writing, Your eyes go black, and I know it's too late to run. She told people that she was pinned, spat on, and later had hands placed on her throat by a delusional and possessed man. I had the opportunity to listen to some parts of this book and I am saying this with 100% sincerity, go read this book. Megan is a wonderful writer and I honestly feel like these words are so powerful. This particular one is indescribable, like I can't read the entire thing because it's got so many no-no words in it but also I just... I don't want to ruin it for you. Number 7. MGK Rumors Cheating rumors are always circulating about everyone. Nobody believes that Hollywood icons can partake in a normal, healthy relationship. For Megan and her fiancé MGK, there have been rumors forever. Since the first day that these two were spotted together, people have been convinced that MGK is somehow an unfaithful maniac. But like, why do people think that? Not sure if you've listened to this guy speak about his music or just in general recently, but he's a bit of a sweetheart. I watched this this man paint his nails with Drew Barrymore on her show. They talked about life, career, and so many cool things, yet the internet looks at this man and just assumes that he's a menace. Well, the rumors were of course false, and Megan Fox actually had to clear the air herself. There was a rumor that MGK was seeing someone named Sophie, who was MGK's guitarist. Megan cleared the air and let everybody know that not only had MGK never cheated on her, she was actually pretty close with bandmates and was confident that Sophie and her fiance were not an item. Megan told people, that it was extremely disrespectful to run a new story that was baseless and contains only lies. Very true. Number six. 2009 Golden Globes. Now this isn't a revelation from a book, but it's something that she had to go through publicly and it does deserve to be mentioned. In 2009, comments started flying left and right after Megan Fox was spotted acting a little bit strange at that year's Golden Globes award ceremony. She explained that during the event, she was placed at a table with Blake Lively and the Jonas Brothers. In the center of the table was a bottle of Moe Champagne. She went through multiple glasses of that very quickly. At the time, she was not much of a no-no juice indulger, but following her actions at the event, she decided to quit for good. She actually had herself a good old-fashioned blackout at the event, but the parts that she does remember are not great. She went on the red carpet and said a lot of things that apparently got her in a ton of trouble. In a clip from 2009, Megan can be seen walking around telling people how nervous she was to be there and that she was on the verge of tossing up her cookies at any moment. She also made a ton of comments on her female co-stars. Nothing bad. Just one quote I found in particular was her expressing how much she wanted to have Salma Hayek's chest. The evening was also a bit strange as people were wondering where her husband at the time, Brian Austin Green, was. She told people that he was a man with an ego and that he didn't want to be her date. Number 5. 
shoplifting. Megan's done a lot of things over the years, and one of those things, as it turns out, is shoplifting. Not while she was famous, though. She did not pull a Winona Ryder. She actually stole a $7 bottle of lip gloss from the Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen makeup collection when she was still in her teens. She revealed in a resurfaced interview that the Walmart employees actually caught her and called the police. She was made to go to a real courtroom and appear in front of a real judge who gave her two options. Either she had to wear a sign that says, I stole from Walmart and stand outside for three days, or she could wrap Christmas presents, guess which one she picked. So, hey, uh, if you had Christmas presents wrapped at a Walmart in the US roughly 20 years ago, might have been Megan Fox. Hey, that's pretty cool. There is not a chance on this planet that that paper still exists, but hey, that'd be pretty valuable paper if it did. Number four, Michael Bay scandal. Megan has been featured in several films over the years, but it was an interview about her time working with Michael Bay that landed her in a lot of hot water. The original live action Transformers movies came out in 2007 and co-starred Megan and and Shia LaBeouf in the leading roles. Now, they were fun films on screen, but behind the scenes, there was apparently a ton of tension on set. According to Megan, who had previously worked with Michael on Bad Boys 2, working for Michael was like working for Schmittler. Fun fact, if you had sh in front of someone's names, you can say it online. Loophole. Of course, Michael didn't appreciate being compared to like one of the worst men in human history, so many speculated that her being left out of the third movie might have had something to do with this behind the scenes drama. She went on to call him bland and claimed that he had no personality or social skills, which is just plain rude. I don't know why she had to say that. When the comments were made public, her career began to slowly suffer. Not only was she written out of the Transformer series, but she was forced to make a public apology and retract her statements following the slew of backlash. She she took a few years off, but Michael himself later acknowledged that there were missteps on both parts and accepted her retractions. But the pair were able to patch things up and work together on the live action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies from 2014. So, yay us! Number three, Me Too movement. As some may remember, the Me Too movement began back in the mid 2010s and acted as a conduit for performers to speak out against their fellow Hollywood peers and, you know, actually have their voices heard. Many celebrities were outed and the situations with them are so bad that I can't even say their names. But I can make up new ones. People like Bill Cos, Harvey Hamburger Shop, and Kevin Spaceman were at the forefront of these allegations. Megan was actually left out of this conversation at the time, and it was mainly due to her being annoyed at Hollywood. She had actually been trying to out some of her peers for years, but according to Megan, she was ridiculed every time she actually spoke up. For Megan, she had already expressed how uncomfortable she felt on certain sets, especially Bad Boys 2, where she was under a waterfall at the age of 15, and claims that she had tried to bring attention to the massage that exists in Hollywood long before the movement existed. However, the movement only made her a bigger punchline. Even when she attempted to branch out into more female-led projects, she was apparently met with similar ridicule. She claims to have never felt truly included in the movement, but believes in it nonetheless. Number two, lied about LA. Celebrities indulge their stories all the time. Most careers are literally built on the foundation of lying for money. While Megan may be great on screen, she's apparently a wonderful liar off screen as well. During an interview with GQ a while back, she detailed her wild nights out when she first moved to Los Angeles, detailing a specific club that she used to attend regularly called The Body Shop. Inside, she met a woman named Nikita and fell hard. Megan explains that she would buy her things, frequent the establishments, and a few other steamy details that I can't get into. However, a few years later, the story was revealed to be heavily indulged by Megan herself. She said that the story was true, but she might have exaggerated some of the aspects for fun. For instance, she made it seem like the relationship between herself and Nikita was physical or romantic, but that just wasn't the case. She just had a crush and they got along. Simple as that. And at number one, legendary. While in attendance at the highly anticipated battle between Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier at UFC 264 in 2021, Megan made some observations about the former president, Donald Trump. During an interview with Jimmy Kimmel, she revealed that the entire audience was in awe of this man attending the event. She said that when he entered, it was to a ton of applause and that he was surrounded surrounded by tons of Secret Service agents, to which she said Trump was the legend. Now, when news broke that Meghan called him a legend, there was a ton of backlash, but she quickly clarified what she meant with the statement. She said that she doesn't align herself with any political parties or individual politicians. She never said that Don was a legend. She said that his appearance at the arena was legendary, okay? She ended the statement by sarcastically saying that she appreciated the uneducated medieval pitchfork-carrying burn 
burn a witch at the stake mentality that the world needs more of. Well said. Again, please go buy this book. It looks so good. Megan did a wonderful job and I can't wait to check it out. Number 10, the community cast. Kicking off our list is a group effort. Chevy Chase was a popular man thanks to National Lampoon and Saturday Night Live, but he returned to the mainstream when he starred as Pierce Hawthorne on the hit sitcom Community. Now, I personally loved this show. Chevy Chase, not so much. And it would appear that his community co-stars would agree with that statement. Around the middle of the show's runtime, Chevy started to complain about his co-stars, especially Donald Glover. It became apparent that he was more than just angry with Donald and was eventually fired for using racial slurs against him. According to Donald himself, aka Troy Barnes, Chevy would often make inappropriate jokes, either aimed at him or as a general way to disrupt a scene. Joel McHale told People that before he was fired, Chevy was complaining about his character on the show and how he was being portrayed. The entire cast reminded Chevy that there was no contract keeping him there, which may have been part of what set him off on set. His character was written out in truly humiliating fashion with his life ending after feeding his geese too much, if you know what I mean. He was playing with his ding dong. Number nine, Tyrese Gibson. It's no longer a surprise to anyone on the planet that James Franco is a bad dude. His negative vibe can actually be traced back to 2005. James and Tyrese Gibson starred opposite each other in a 2005 dramatic piece called Annopolis. The story followed Franco's character wanting to attend the titular Naval Academy and entering into a boxing tournament against some of the Navy's best and brightest. His main opponent was, of course, Tyrese Gibson. Throughout the majority of the film, James and Tyrese would regularly practice their choreography for their final fight of the film. Now, method acting is one thing when you just pretend to be someone else all the time, but it's different when you're literally punching your co-star for real. Instead of the normal film choreography allowing actors to fake hit each other, Franco was throwing real punches left and right without warning. Gibson tried to be civil at first and just asked him to lighten up, but Franco ignored him and continued to box his little heart out. When asked about the incident in interviews, Franco defends himself by saying that he was aware that he made the set difficult at times and just claimed to be so wrapped up in his role that he probably wasn't as friendly as he could be. Gibson, however, holds a massive grudge towards Franco, claiming that he'd never stepped foot in the same room as him ever again. Good news for Tyrese, James got canceled and Fast 11 is surely on its way. Maybe they'll go to Atlantis this time. Okay, but why does that sound cool though? Number eight, Viola Davis. Now the stories about Jared Leto and his acting methods are infamous. On almost every single set that he's been on, this dude has just caused some kind of issue. Someone made very smart decision to keep Jared away from his castmates on the set of Haunted Mansion. That decision really should have been made though on the set of the long forgotten 2016 Suicide Squad from DC Comics when Jared played the Joker and took it just way too far. Now, I have mentioned the fact that he's left live animals in people's trailers and used adult skin tubes on their pillows in many times in many other videos. For Amanda Waller, aka Viola Davis, she actually received an unwanted surprise that almost forced her to quit the gig. One day she returned to her trailer where she found a case filled with ammunition. Thousands of little metal life enders were just left there as a gift from Jared. Viola did not think this was a present, in fact she thought that this was a threat. After speaking to her fellow castmates, she realized that it was just Jared leaving her a fun little gift, you know, just enjoy it. This was frightening to say the least, but for Viola, it set her off. When speaking about her time on the film, she has maintained that Jared was intense and she's glad that she never had to be face to face with him on screen. Or maybe she was. Honestly, I try not to think about that movie very much. Number seven, Amy Hill. Yeah, baby, this one's shagadelic. Despite being a Canadian treasure and the man behind some comedy cult classics like Austin Powers and Wayne's World, Mike Myers is apparently a menace on set. According to his Cat in the Hat co-star, Amy Hill, Mike had handlers dress his entire trailer and work area in tenting. Apparently, he didn't want anyone to physically see him. Honestly, that's fair. If I was in a cat suit with an actual like plastic bum crack in it, I would want to hide too. His reputation as a difficult Donnie may have something to do with Hollywood basically blacklisting him from appearing as a lead in anything thanks to The Love Guru, which again, I try not to think about that movie. Of course, he recently starred in his own show called The Pentaveret, which aired on Netflix, a show where he was forced to play half of the cast because he couldn't get more people to work with him. Or maybe it's because of The Love Guru. Honestly, it's a bad movie, who knows? Number six, Lado. 
Lado debuted a new song at Coachella earlier this year, a catchy tune that a lot of fans are calling a direct diss towards Nicki Minaj. The big energy rapper provided fans with a fun dance track packed to the brim with shade. Rapping the lyrics, snitches acting like they're running it, they really ran through. She thought I would kiss her ash, but she, she just, eh, she mustn't have to. She must not have took her meds. Can you tell I'm not a rapper? <laughs> Lado ended the song with several clues as to who the song was about, including some ad libs like, say she got a problem, imaginary smoke. You said it's up, then put on the floor. I honestly would love to quote everything that she sang or said about Nikki, but it just does not sound right coming out of me. I mean, just listen to how I say the word snitch, like the true Harry Potter geek that I am. In the past, the two had a very public battle on Twitter with swear words and shade being thrown left and right. After Coachella in 2022, these two fell out even harder. An all-out verbal war had begun with the two now entangled in a lifelong feud that may never fade. Now, I'm not sure who the rude one is in this case. I will let you be the judge because you're probably a fan and I'm not. Number five, George Takai. This one is for all of you Star Trek fans out there. Please just live long and prosper and enjoy this video. Now, the world will surely be well aware of this long-standing feud between William Shatner and his Star Trek co-star, George Takai. This feud has lasted over 50 years, and according to George, boils down to William being a prima donna attention hog the entire time he was on set. Over the years, George has always been very vocal about his opinion on his fellow Star Trek cast and crew. Most of the time, he has nothing but nice things to say and claims to have made lifelong friends from the project. But there is one that he despises, William Shatner. William Shatner was the bane of everyone's existence on set. He loved being the center of attention and he was very self-involved. He wanted everyone to know who he was. William actually responded to these claims telling people that he believed his Star Trek co-star was damaging his good name for publicity's sake. Why would a man who's barely acted in 30 years suddenly want to bash you for fame and glory? Did, that doesn't make sense. I don't know if anyone's noticed or not, but William Shatner hasn't done much either in a while other than petition to go to space for real. Number four, Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne and Vin Diesel first met on the set of Fast Five, the fifth Fast and Furious movie. They're really great with names. This was Vin Diesel's fifth movie, while it was Dwayne Johnson's first, not just in the franchise, but in acting in general. Now, at first, everything seemed to be okay with these guys. Fast Five made a ton of money, and they asked Dwayne to come back for a sixth and seventh installment. However, something changed in 2016 when in a now deleted post, now deleted post called one of his fellow Fast Seven co stars a candied bum bum. Only he didn't say bum bum. Man, I wish I could swear. He actually said a word that rhymes with grass. Rumors began to fly that he was more than likely referencing Vin Diesel. Rumors proven true only a week later. Following the premiere of Fate of the Furious, Johnson posted to Instagram thanking all of his fellow cast members by name, but he left Vin Diesel out of it. It was later confirmed by Michelle Rodriguez, their co-star, that there was a massive amount of tension on set. They were bros at first, but as time went on, the franchise evolved, and so did their egos. They fought constantly over who should get more screen time, more money, who was the real lead, you know? Toxic stuff like like that. To keep both of the actors happy, Johnson was given a spin-off movie where he co-starred with Jason Statham, and Vin Diesel was left right where he belongs with his family. Number three, Meryl Streep. Dustin Hoffman is a very easy man to spot. Not only is he a solid actor, but he has a very specific face. Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium, anyone? Huh? Remember that movie? I didn't until I started writing this script, and I'm gonna go watch it tonight. Despite his ability to play lovable and cheerful characters, he actually started out as somewhat of a villain. On the second day of filming his more famous part in Kramer vs. Kramer, Dustin decided to improvise a scene where he strikes Meryl Streep across the face. Uh, Sorry, let me rephrase that. Dustin Hoffman thought it'd be a good idea to slap Meryl Streep. Mamma Mia, that's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> Get it? Cause she was in mama. I'm just gonna move on. Not only was Meryl shocked by the move, but she recalled that Dustin was also trying to use a tactic on her called emotional recall, taunting her about her late partner, John Cazale, and his illness. So just extra level of evil from Dusty. Number two, Freddie Prince Jr. Kiefer Sutherland is known for his roles in movies like Lost Boys and Stand By Me and has built a nice little nest egg for himself. For a long time, he was starring in the crime drama 24. Many celebrities have made small cameos and reoccurring roles on the show, but in 2010, Scooby-Doo alumni Freddie Prince Jr. was casted as Agent Cole Ortiz. Despite the massive success of the show, the job left him scarred, admitting that he hated every moment of it. According to Freddie, 
Kiefer Sutherland is the most unprofessional person in the entire world. He continued to say that he wasn't talking trash. This was something that he would say happily to Kiefer's face. Apparently, a ton of his co-stars agree that he makes filming a living nightmare. Following the end of his character's time on the show, he did slow down in the acting world, now limiting himself to voiceover and cameo roles. The odd thing was that while there was some people backing up Freddy's story, there were actually a higher number of defenders for Sutherland, claiming the exact opposite was happening. Some say he's the most professional man in the world, so if anyone watching this knows Kiefer, weigh in, right? Hashtag Kiefer good or hashtag Kiefer bad and see if what happens. Number one, Rachel McAdams. The Notebook is considered to be a great romantic movie, one of the greatest of all time, in fact. Oddly enough, the on-screen couple did not get along at all while filming. Rachel McAdams and her co-star Ryan Gosling would constantly fight on set and seem to have completely opposite ideas on how most of the scenes should play out. One day in particular was pretty exciting for anyone not involved, all the drama watchers on set enjoying their free tea. Ryan called over the director and demanded that Rachel be replaced by another actress to read her lines. In front of 150 crew members, Ryan Gosling was claiming that Rachel wasn't giving him anything and the two would constantly yell at each other. Their toxic on set feud somehow morphed into a real life relationship that lasted for like two years. Anyone who's worked on the set of this film blames them for constant schedule setbacks and creating an overall difficult work environment. So honestly, we don't know who the meanest one was there, Rachel or Ryan, you be the judge. <laughs>